Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting held this February 23rd, 2022 at 501 p.m. This is going to be a hybrid Zoom municipal and it's going to be held at the municipal offices. 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and a participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for this in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with the remote participation details noted below. The call-in number is 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Passcode is 570012. For Zoom, go into the Town of Deerfield website and click on the select board meeting uh, for tonight and that'll lead you to the link to click on. I'll call this meeting to order. Okay, sure. Uh, so we'll be going into obviously into ex executive session from five to about 5.55 p.m. Um, pursuant, I'll make a motion pursuant to Mass General Law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with Massachusetts Coalition of Police, IUPA, uh, AFL-CIO, the police, and UPSEU highway. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town, does the chair declare so? Chair, chair declares. I, I so declare. Thank you. And pursuant to Mass Chapter, uh, uh, Mass <laughs> the Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Section 2, uh, A2, and subject to the chairman's declaration of a roll call vote, uh, the select board may meet to conduct strategy se sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or contract negotiations with a town administrator if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town. And pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section A6, and subject to the chairman's declaration and a roll call vote, the select board may meet to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or land of value. In the town of Deerfield's assessor map 168, lot 21, parcels 2-1 and 2-2, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town. And the chair declares so. I so declare, the roll call vote. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, David. And we'll uh, invite in Casey Warren, our town administrator, and uh, town attorney Lisa Mead, and town attorney Kate Federoff. And Lisa Mead. Yes. And, uh, and uh, Chief John Petrick. And Chief John Petrick. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, welcome back to the open session. Uh, right now we had uh, Julie uh, on about the. Uh, Community Preservation Act funding application. Are you going to do the? Yeah, we're. Uh, do, um, well, I was wondering if we have a minute. Julie, do you have a second so we can run through public comment and then? Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. So um, we have moved public comment to the beginning of our meeting because um, we felt we wanted public to, to be able to have a have a moment to talk about the issues that are on. The agenda um, normally we have it at the end so we can get through our meeting um, so we're structuring our public comment such as this is that um, we're allowing public comment in the beginning people can comment on any items on the agenda or any of the items that you want to talk about that are in the power of the board um, 
and then uh, each person will have a couple minutes to speak. Um, we'll time them, and then um, we can extend the time if needed, but we try to get to everybody there. And then as we get into our business of the town, we won't be taking comments from the public on any of the items. So if you want to talk about any of the issues on the agenda, now's the time to kind of have those discussions. And as we get into the each agenda item, we, we used to go out to the public and we did both items and we're trying to streamline this to make sure that we give everybody the ability to have a discussion early on about whatever's on the agenda and then as we get into our business it allows us to do our job and just focus on on that instead of going to the public for every single item that's on there so um, we will open it up for public comment there may not be anybody if any anybody has any comments tonight we'd love to hear from you jennifer bermillard has her hand raised great welcome jennifer, jennifer. Hi, good evening. Um, I, as the South County Senior Center Director, I have a recognition um, for our program coordinator before you this evening, and I really would like you to um, acknowledge and uh, sign that for, um, for Susan Corey. I think she's done a phenomenal job keeping the program afloat um, for the past couple of years um, amongst the pandemic, and while there has not been a um, director. Um, so I have that before you this evening. And um, I'd also like to uh, just say that I am, am, am in support um, as a constituent and as a member of the Historic Commission and CCI for the application before you for the CPC funding, um, you know, for approval going forward with the renovations to the grammar school. Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to recognizing her for sure, all the work she's done. Any other comment? Oh, Tim, Tim has his hand up. Hi, Tim. Good evening. Um, I would also like to second the, the, the CPC is very excited about the uh, proposals that we're going to be receiving this year. In particular, um, I'm a strong proponent of finding a new use for the uh, former grammar school. So I look forward to receiving the uh, full application and working through the process with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, any, any other comments tonight? I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, thank you so much. We'll move on with the meeting. Uh, Julie, you're up. All right. So I have slides, hopefully you can see those. Uh, so going, there we go. Okay, um, so the project that we're proposing is to rehabilitate the old grammar school building. That's what I call it. It's the building that the senior center was most recently in um, and to repurpose that to house the town municipal offices. The CPA funding that we're requesting, it comes in two phases. The first phase is to pretty much create the architectural and engineering drawings for um, accomplishing the refurbishment. And then there's a couple of immediate actions that need to be done just to keep the building in good enough shape that we'll be able to rehabilitate it. There's been some water intrusion and there's some bricks that have fallen out of the facade and both of those problems need to be repaired um, fairly quickly. Um, and then the last little piece of that is just the administration of the RFP in order to be able to hire the architects and engineers who will create the drawings. <clears throat> Phase two of that is then the actual refurbishment of the building, um, which includes um, pretty much completely gutting and redoing the entire interior of the building, redoing the exterior of the building, and then adding an elevator or stairwell. And um, this picture isn't great, but if you can look at this, this is the perspective view from Conway Street. So like the bank is behind you, the library is on the other side of the building, and then off to the left is the police station and the town hall where it is right now. Um, so that's what we're looking at. And we would add to the back of it, essentially a tower that contains the stairwell and the elevator. Um, um, John Pachurik worked with some architects to get some drawings, some sort of preliminary sketches done um, to get this together. So the advantages of this project, it gives you an improved municipal office space. It's more space, it's bigger square footage than you have right now. 
um, and it'll be better conditions because it'll be a newly refurbished building. So it'll have better ventilation, better heating, better electrical service, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the goal is to have an energy smart building and it saves a historical resource in the town. It saves this building and gives it a new purpose and, and lets it um, continue on. And um, as, as my position in finance committee, I find this last piece very exciting, which is that it, we, this can be done with no increase to the tax burden on town residents. The CPA funds, that's a tax we've already voted on ourselves. Um, we may as well use, the, use those funds to do something for the town that really helps the town out. Um, so here is um, another idea out there that it is working through is um, we're seeking, the town is seeking funding for um, a combined community center. And one idea of that would be a building that would be built um, on the back side. So this, this the same image we had before, this stair tower and elevator could then service this new building as well if grant funding is received in order to build a new building. Um, if funding is not received or if there's some longish delay in getting that funding, then this project by moving the municipal offices into this building, it opens up that current town hall to be used as a senior center. So regardless of um, whether funding is received or not, the senior center will have a home to be that will be, in my opinion, a, a decent space. Oops. Nope, she's back. Yep. Yep. Sorry, okay. Um, so then there's a rough estimate in here for budget and timeline. Um, you can see these here. So um, there's a the phase one estimate is 5,000 for the RFD, RFQ generation, 400,000 for the drawings, which is 10% of the complete re rehabilitation. And that appears to be kind of the going um, price for getting a set of drawings together for a project similar to this. And then 70,000 for those immediate repairs. The 400,000 for the rehabilitation and the 70,000 for the immediate repairs, those estimates were drawn from the building assessment that was done by GRLA. Um, had them come in and do the building assessments of several buildings in town. Um, so it's, it, it's pretty rough estimates, but we at least have some, some tie to a, um, a, a real estimate of that. Um, and then we have, again, a very rough timeline. So assuming it gets approved at town meeting this year in April, we would immediately begin drafting the RFP, um, try to get a contract out by July, about six months for architectural drawings, then some time for getting the, you know, the RFP out for the, um, the actual refurbishment, um, and then a, a year plus for the, the construction within the building. Um, so the status, the application is ready for um, select board review and submission to CPC. Um, Dave Wolfram is actually lead on this project. I just um, offered up some help in pulling the paperwork together. Um, okay. All portions of the application are complete. I actually, Jen Remillard, if, if you're willing to write a letter um, personally, that would help me out. The one thing I don't have is any letters from just like people. Um, as opposed to um, actual groups. Thanks. Um, so if anybody would like to send us a letter of support, that would help this, this application out. One thing that's missing, it is due March 1st, so we only have about a week left. Um, and we do have letters of support from the Town Building Advisory Committee, the Historical Commission, and CCI. Um, there are two questions I have for the select board. One is that there is a one of the questions, and it says, is the owner willing to have a permanent restriction attached to the property? Please provide a statement of such. So this is what I wrote. Yes, that the building is town owned and the select board has agreed that a permanent restriction can be attached to the property per the vote at the select board meeting. So that's sort of um, aspirational, I guess, when I wrote that down. But if you all agree that um, a permanent restriction can be attached to the property, that's one thing that needs to go in this application. Another question I have is, um, 
I'm not really looking for an answer to it, but I'm worried about, we were talking with Kevin and, and he's been sick. And so I'm worried that the immediate actions to preserve the building um, aren't being taken. And I don't know um, who to approach to push that. And so I just, I guess I'm just throwing the thought out there that, that every time I talk to somebody that that's still done. Um, and that is- Julie, did we have like a, a yeah. do, did we have a list of what we really needed to do kind of right away just to, just to, yes. you do, you have that, you're okay. So then we can reach out to people. Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, so there's really two things. One is there's some water intrusion, and the other is there's some bricks falling out of the facade. Got it. And two things, I think. Um, John Patrick, I don't know if you have additional comments, even. No, I think you're spot on with the whole presentation, including what needs to be done. And uh, in Kevin's absence, if I have to step in, I'm more than happy to. I can pull uh, Paul Corpito over there and see if Paul's been there. And uh, if he provided Kevin with an estimate, it's sitting in his email. I know Kevin. Right before he got sick was uh, was working with Paul. So the only thing I'd have to do is sit down with Greg Franceschi, who uh, I think Greg's identified where the water was coming in and then develop a, a yeah. true game plan and action and figure out how we can stop that water going in immediately. Great, thank you. Very good. Thank, thank you, Julie. Julie. Well done. Yeah, thank very, you, very Julie, well done. so much. I, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you doing all this work, seriously. This is really great. Sure. So yeah, I'm excited to have the project. So so are you willing for there to be a permanent restriction <laughs> attached to the property? Yes, I mean, I'm, I think so. Do we need a motion and a vote or Casey, do you want to I need to ask in? about the permanent restriction. I did ask that question. I haven't had a chance to circle back around, Julie. I, I think this is like to, Tim Newman's per, permanent restriction. I know, but can you do it on a municipal building is the question. Tim, That's what Tim I, I for? sent. An, I sent an email to council. I hadn't been she and I haven't yeah. had a chance to connect. I, to I don't think, I don't think there's any issue, Julie. It's just I don't. We need to figure it out. Yeah, it's just a question yeah. of making sure we get that answer. Um, we could look at what Donna McDickel's doing, but I don't know if there's real. Um, it would have to be filed. I read online about it. Actually, said something along the lines of, "You're giving the town permission, like." First, refusal before we tear down the building. So I really think it's it's kind of sketchy about whether it applies to a municipal building anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know. We'll yeah, to... it's more meant for private source funding. Yeah. 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 So you don't put a bunch of money into it and then they tear the building down. But... Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. So once you get an answer back from Lisa, then if you building have... is town owned, owned and the select board has. A... Subject to that restriction can be attached to the property if necessary or something like that. Yeah. So I'll make a motion. To, I make a motion to approve the um, the CPA funding application um, pending the you know answer on the what, what do we ask restriction. the restriction. Thank you. I will second that and um, just I want to make sure that it's noted in our minutes that. Julie did a fantastic job doing this application. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Sure, no problem. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Thanks again, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, John, for your help. Thanks, yep. John. Yes. Oh, anytime. Yeah. Casey, maybe we can connect on the uh, the old senior center of the grammar school, what we're talking about and figure out a plan to move that forward. Yeah. With, with the water issues and the brick. Just say yes. 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 Perfect. Good. <laughs> yeah. Or John will just run with it as usual and we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, not scheduled. Oh, well, that's at seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, select board uh, reports or announcements. Um, actually, I have um, three. Uh, no, or four. Just well, I'm not sure if you want to take it as um, business not an anticipated. These are issues that came up um, this week. What's that again? Well, okay, um, Holly. Um, Linkowski called me um, about the women's club 
and it was a permit on the for the raffle. That's a town clerk thing. Yeah, but we've never. I mean, the police, um, Polish club. We've we've not ever done the permits. Yeah, we do. We I sign them all the time. Yeah, they happen all the time. They go through the clerk's office. Are I you, sign probably 10, you 10 to twenty the permit, of them. John, for the police department raffle. I have to sign them as chief of police for the raffles. She needs to put it through the clerk's office, Carol. Yeah, all she's going to do is fill out the form quick. She brings it over for my signature, files it with the clerk's office, and she's good. She is legally compliant. It is the law that she has to do it. You can't circumvent it. Not taking the town doesn't take a percentage no, of. No, not at all. No, no right? no, I didn't no. think so. She it's just, just She just registers the yes. yes. a lot. Yeah, yeah right. there's no fee involved. Right. Well, what about okay. filing with the state? Did you file anything with the state for like the police department one or the, any of the ones that happen in town? No, nope, we just file the uh, paperwork in the clerk's office. That's it. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Yep. Okay, John, yep. is it a is it in relation to the five hundred one c three? I don't know. I know it's actually just in Mass General Laws. Yeah. I, I would do it via the five hundred one c three, not. Okay. I'll. I'll I'll talk with Deb. If she calls call Jen years. Wallace, Jen can explain okay. what she has to do on our end. Okay. Okay. It's just right. a standard yeah. form. It's a one page. It's easy. Yeah. Okay. Then the Frontier Boys ba baseball team wants to do the plant sale on May 7th in front of the Senior Center. Is that okay with all them? Yeah. I told yeah, they Sharon yes, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, and then Tim Newman has the Mass Historical um, Society has um, finally responded to him on the PVMA, um, you know, re restoration work on the uh, up in Old Deerfield that we had voted for. The preservation. Preservation, yes. right. So they, but they're not sure because still under COVID conditions, they, they want to come out and do a, a site visit, but they haven't set up a date. So he's still worried about us meeting our he wasn't sure if it was April when we voted town meeting or if it was July, we might have to ask for an extension to get the survey done by the Mass Historical Society. So we asked for an extension on the grant itself. Right. Is what we would do is we would put an article on to request an extension if we can't get that done. Okay. Before so I, I just. Would, let's check, but it, it probably, the funding for that probably didn't start until July 1st. Okay, well that's what I figured because it was a town meeting vote, so it would be July 1st, so if he can't get a survey done. Um, yeah, so if we can't get a survey done by July 1st, we might have to grant an extension. Okay, okay, and then the, the final thing is I have a meeting set up for 1030 on February 28th with a, a Quarian. it's a, a company subsidiary of Eversource, they are interested in buying the old Deerfield sewer treatment plant. So I didn't know if you. Well, I got an email from them and a, a flyer from them. Yeah. I haven't even had a chance to dig into it. It's, it's an, yeah, they are I set up a meeting with him to come up. And so. Um, buy the sewer? Yeah. No, buy the, the whole, buy the whole sewer treatment plant. Because. What, well, what this is, they, they are buying up, he, he's, they're a company of Cecilia of Eversource. Eversource wants to expand, and they don't have the ability to do that on the grid. So what they're doing is they're buying up water companies, sewer treatment plants, all that kind of stuff. They have the capital to fix them, and then they get their investment back over a period of time. So we... Um, you know, potentially could sell Old Deerfield and the pipe system. So it's $20 million that we don't have to fix. I, I, the only reason I know that it's legit is because I called uh, out in Sheffield and they have bought a water, a water system out there. I mean, I know the select board person. How do they, how do, and then they just jack rates or what do they, I mean? They get their money back through rates, yeah. So we need to dig into it, is what I would say. Yeah. Well, he's coming here Monday at 1030 to look at the sewer treatment plant. Um, Trevor and Case, uh, looking for my. We've got 
things going on down there that we need to. I set up the meeting so we could have primary information. He's been sending you information and he's been trying to contact you for, I don't know, a month or so. No, two, but, I have one email and I have one call and I literally saw it this morning. Well, because I, I'm just saying, so he's going to. Here's, here's my question. So how can we do that? Well, we can either post for all three of us here or Trevor or D Dave could meet with them. I don't no, care. No, I'm functionally, we have the wastewater treatment plant facility project that's Monday through Thursday where they're doing physical work out there. Plus, we need to have an operator there, Carol. Like, physically have somebody there to walk around the plant. And we've got one operator that's. I'm not, not working. talking about, I'm not talking about doing a site. I'm talking about just coming, to just coming to talk to us. So we need to publish a meeting. Right. You guys want to have a meeting. Wednesday, Monday. Monday, the 28th at 1030. Yep. Yeah, he wrote a note and left it with a pamphlet for me. I got it this morning. Okay. And so it, that was too late to get it into the mail. So I, it's scanned. It's just not ready to go into your mail. Because your packet was substantially complete at that point. Well, I I had returned his phone call from a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Well, does that mean you want to expedite the uh, connection at the uh, landfill to uh, for the solar? Because they're the ones who that up. Right? It, it, the negotiations, right? That's part of negotiations. <laughs> Maybe we can get that done. <laughs> I'm, I just I just thought that this was an opportunity maybe to solve our problem. We just well, sell the sewer. Yeah. 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 Well, yes, but I mean, then we can focus on South Deerfield and not have to worry about another 20. I mean, because it's 15 to 16. I, already, I was up front with them. It was 15 to 16 million in repairs yeah. and plus three or four million in collection pipe repairs. I just rounded it out to 20 million in repairs. I was up front with him and, and he's still interested. So, and legitimately, I guess they, no, well, they're, yeah, but they, they have the capital to invest it and they are looking for returns. All right. Yeah. We'll check it out. So, and they get paid back by, um, I would think so. Well, it would, cut, it would save us from having people employed and all kinds of stuff. So. I mean, I, I do worry about the rates for the people who are left there. Um, that, I mean, it's still a public, it's a quasi, you know, it's still public yeah, utility. So out, they so. have to go to the rate board to, I mean, you know, you can't just charge any old rate. Our but. rate? They would come to us for our no, rate. No, 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 they go to the DPU. DPU. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Okay. What was her name? Uh, Aquarium. See, uh, it's like a Aquarium. Do you want me to share? The guy's name is Nick. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Me to share it, Casey, or no? Say that again. Would you like me to share it, the, the scan, or no? no? That's, that's okay. No, that's fine. You could just email it. All right. We need to set up a meeting for the select board, though, for Monday. Yeah, I will write it down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, he wanted to meet in person, so. Great. Okay. Then we just do it in person. Okay, in person? Yeah. Yep. Here at the town hall. Yep, yeah, yep. this is this is not a site booth. Yeah, I thought they wanted to do a site booth. He he needs to make sure that he's a legit before we waste more staff time. Right. Hey. No. No. Um, Obviously, some of the town roads are getting a few potholes right now. 
Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, before you complain to our highway department, uh, if you're on Sugarloaf Street, which has a significant number, remember that is owned by the state. That is not the town road. So you can call them, complain. Massive frosties too, all yeah. over the place. Yeah. So, they're, um, they're very aware of them. Yeah. So if uh, some things are happening in town that are out of our control, uh, we try to bring it to their attention, but we don't always get a, a, a good year sometimes. Because sometimes District 2 likes to kind of force things down our throat, but how long that was? Should I bring that up now? No? You can. No? Okay. <laughs> um, but, so, it's not on our agenda anyway, right? No. No. So. Uh, I do know that Kristen has reached out to this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, District 2 is trying to tell us that we're responsible for the sidewalks on Route 5 and 10, which... No. No. Not until we... Um, I mean, we have to have a sidewalk yeah. bylaw. Yeah, I, I think um, I asked Casey to um, have a placeholder on our... Uh, yeah, I was going to... That's what we're going to have on the agenda. Yeah. Because uh, they did reach out, and I think Tim Meyer talked to you, too, didn't Yes, yeah. I told him that we were going to put something on the town meeting. So we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, it just, they didn't really talk to us about the fact that there was the expectation that either the town or the residents, however the towns got their sidewalks, because most towns around us have bylaws that we and the residents take care of the sidewalks, and we did feel that that's not the case, and he didn't realize that. But they didn't really talk to us about the sidewalks going in. And the no, they put the sidewalks in and then expect us to maintain them, and that's like, no. And so that's, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's yep. attention because we got a flurry of complaints a few weeks ago. And if we're having another storm um, on Friday, I just want everybody to understand that, you know, DOT is aware of the fact that people are concerned about the walkability along there. Um, but they, moving forward, expect the town to take care of it. And so I said, um, I'm out. <laughs> so I, I told them I would bring it to you so you guys. Yeah, I, I told him the same thing when I called about the bridge. Oh, the bridge. yes, did you talk to Tim? yes. No, I did talk to Tim, but Laura, uh, Laura, uh, Lauren Hansen got back to me and um, the uh, Stillwater Bridge is a one lane open design. Oh, good. So she was. Your hard work uh, paid off. <laughs> yes, she Thank was you. really, really good. She um, sent me all the stuff. I will forward it to you all. Um, I just forgot about it. I'm sorry. We just had so many things going on. But um, I did find out about that. So we're off the hook as far as worrying yeah, about that. Yeah, that EMS right. and. Um, right, right. As long as they don't throw a granite island but, on the middle of that. But that lane. was actually the difference <laughs> between what was published in the original release and the twenty million nine hundred and eighty six dollars or whatever that I had had as a as the estimate from um somebody else at oh from Tim. Tim is the one that looked it up. And what they did is they actually changed it because of our request. So it they did listen to us. So it was worth it. It was worth trying to intervene. So that was one Big good news. Is she the bridge person down there? No, the bridge person never called me back. But she is the one. She ended up. She's from Boston, and you know I had called and complained. I so she responded to me. Response. No, the actual Paula there never called me back. But it's okay because mm -hmm. we had the information, okay. and we have all the numbers and everything, so that we can track it. So I will forward you her email, and we need to have that tickler maybe Jen or somebody can tickle it so you just what you have to do is you just check it like put it on your in um, your project list yeah just put it on your calendar to check it once a month or once every six weeks and you just check that number make sure there's no changes right because what happens is 
you know, stuff happens and they change stuff and they don't notify us. And then, you know, that's how over the years the number got dropped. And so we'd check it and there'd be no number. And then you'd have to call and complain and go to meetings and then they put the number back on. This is the same thing until it goes out to bid. Yeah, it can it can be moved around. It's in the pipeline. It's scheduled, and there's a money appropriated for an one lane open mm -hmm. repair. However, it could go back to the original 19 million or whatever, which is is the bridge closed. So we have to keep tickling that number, and and so it just it's just something on the calendar every few weeks you just oh it's still there the money is still money is still appropriated and Can then you where you that is? watch that yeah you just have to you just have to put it on your calendar yeah i just then, need to know where to find it and i'll put it on my calendar yeah and you just check it to make sure the money is appropriated and it stays the same if it changes if it goes up it's okay but if it change if it downgrades any amount then that's when you you know notify us and we can start mm -hmm. complaining again okay what site is it pardon me? it's the stillwater bridge project you know the, the um website that i would have there's, a there's yeah website. it's it's on their website that you can just go and check i'll show you tomorrow oh, okay it's not a, it's not a big deal it takes literally two seconds to do yeah no problem but we just have to keep an eye on it because that's the only way until it actually goes into the bid out to bid it it can change okay thank you and it's not going out to bid till um 2020 at some time in 23 late 23 at this point right okay uh public health um, well, there is one announcement that um, I haven't seen this since 2005, so this is a little bit scary. Um, there's a highly pathogenic avian influenza that has been detected in the migra migratory water birds in the Atlantic Flyway from Canada all the way down to Virginia and Florida and New Hampshire. You know, uh, we're in the flyway. So what it is, is a 90 day um, temporary confinement uh, recommendation. It's, it's not an order, it's a recommendation for the next 90 days that everyone that has birds, chickens, turkeys, all that kind of stuff, um, it's really important that you do every, um, thing you can do to, to reduce the risk of exposure of this virus um, to, from wild birds to your domestic population. This is MDAR is advising all backyard and commercial poultry um, owners to practice strong biosecurity measures to prevent domestic poultry coming into contact with wild birds. This. Um, Specifically, if you are raising anything that you want organic, this has to be um, a, a real issue. So um, we will go through our animal inspector and um, send out this notice to all of the um, backyard chicken and bird, you know, fowl yeah, like, group. Do you, do you know how they would do that? I mean, how do you protect them? Like from you just keep them more contained. You know, you yeah. keep them caged, so it's not you can't have like like free range, like okay. Dave was talking about. You you know, they just are saying, please do not. Right. And and the last time I saw this was in two thousand five when we had bird flu. It was this is, I mean it was this is serious. So anyway, just letting people yeah. know about that. Mm -hmm. And Dick will handle notification. Uh, well, Alex and Dick both, but. Yeah. It's based on Dick's um, backyard visits. So, and then I, I don't have anything in writing, um, but I've been talking with um, Darius, uh, for, you know, our superintendent, and it's his um, indication, you know, his plan, uh, from what I understand, is to um, raise the mask mandate in the schools on March 14th. 
And we have another meeting between now and then, so it's not a big deal. We don't have to vote it on tonight because I don't actually have his recommendation. But I would say our, um, we are doing everything we can to um, figure out what the trends are in Deerfield, but there's just no way to predict, there's no reliable way to predict any trends. So what we're doing is just monitoring the trends and the information we use is like your deaths, hospitalizations, um, clusters, any clusters, number of cases, school cases, absences, and vaccination rates. And it it is our, you know, this Alex is a health agent and myself, we feel that the caseload is, you know, the number of cases is really, really dropped. And I, I I'm, you know, I think it's okay to do the March 14th yeah, mask mandate to lift it. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I think the 14th makes sense. The state is lifting it as of Monday, except yeah. for local mandates. Right. And um, I don't think that's a smart thing because kids are just coming back from school vacation. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of travel involved and you know, but but lifting it in two weeks makes total sense because anybody that has been sick. Anybody that passes it on, you know, if there is a surge, then we are containing it. And um, I, I mean, it's still a choice of people can wear a mask and, mm -hmm. and people need to understand that we still do not have um, any vaccine available for the under fives. So that is our most vulnerable, unprepared group. But honestly, we've tried very, very hard um, to make vaccine available to uh, school age kids, we have a fairly good vaccination rate. Mm -hmm. um, I, our booster rate isn't as uh, good as I would hope, but it's, you know, we still have fully vaccinated people and the up to date booster really makes a difference in the Omicron. We're watching um, the Omicron, uh, it's the BA1. Um, variant of the Omicron is what's prevalent right now. Only about 4% of the cases in, in this, um, the state and in the country on the average is this BA2 Omicron, which is more serious. So we've got to watch this. We're sequencing just like we sequence with Delta. But I feel we're like we have, we have the ability to do this now, and I think we should, and then we just keep an eye on everything. So um, Waitley and Sunderland, my um, discussion with them, they, uh, well, Conway and Sunderland are meeting on Monday, the 28th, um, and it appears that they would, are agreeing to do this. And then Waitley is uh, meeting on March 1st, and it appears they are doing, you know, willing to consider this. So I would say this is a, we don't need to have an actual meeting, but I would say that I feel comfortable everyone is going to support this, and I would recommend that we support that. Too. Yeah, I think, and then look at, at any, and as I think as Darius said early, early on in his letter, this is not a no mask. This is a really reducing that. Requirement. You, know, you still have masks on buses, and there's certain areas yes. where you still are going to need that. Yes. And we all keep watching the numbers. If you have another spike, there's no no doubt that we would have to take measures again. But I think whenever you have science tells you that you can lift something like that, I, I, we need to. So. Well, what's happening is this is turning into more of an endemic kind right. of thing rather than a pandemic. So that means how are we going to live with it? Right. So we need to, you know, encourage the vaccination. Vaccination, it's clear, it works. Um, masks, when you feel not comfortable in a space mm -hmm. that you can't socially distance, um, adequately and that you just feel uncomfortable, you should be wearing a mask. Or you have immune compromised um, household members. I mean, that's severe. You support people if they want. All right, and then you should be aware. But we need, we're, we're, we are monitoring this. Alex is on, to, on this stuff all the time too. So between the two of us, I think there's enough looking what's going on in our community that I feel like we can, monitor the trends. You can't predict, but you can monitor. Right. Um, and we are trying to do outreach and we're gonna, and the next thing I'm suggesting is this testing opportunity. Um, I don't wanna say that we have a really good deal, but um, 
this group uh, has is willing to come to us with no minimum requirement. The other communities, Alex can call around. The other communities like South, uh, like East Hampton and Northampton, Southwick, they all have minimum requirements. They're willing to come and do the PCR testing a couple days a week here at this. Um, we'll set up the table. If, if, we, if we agree tonight to do this, in a couple weeks, they can set this up. If we don't want to use a senior center with a table by the door, um, then we got to wait for a kiosk and it'll be six weeks and then it's like pointless. But for a temporary amount of time in the spring, we can get PCR testing here in Deerfield for free. Won't cost us, the town, anything. Won't cost um, people anything. They can just, you know, charge their insurance and they can get their PCR testing. And I think that between the testing and, um, you know, waiting till after school break, I think, uh, you know, any surge from school break, I think we should be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so anyway, Alex can talk, we can talk about the PCR testing. Okay. Yes, we'll have to take a vote on it. But I wanted Alex to, Alex is the one that's done the research with the other communities. So um, I wanted to make sure that Dave, I, I went to the meeting with Alex with um, the team of people that were, you know, would be managing this. So I feel pretty comfortable, but Alex is the one that called um, the different communities to make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, this is a legit kind of a situation. Yeah. So Alex, you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Actually, I mean, yeah, um, I think it's a, just a really good idea. Um, it's it's um, Alex, can you just uh, talk a little closer to the can you hear me? So can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. Sorry. <clears throat> OK, so I think it's a really good idea in the sense that, you know, this is a temporary kind of fix right now. Um, I don't. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it, it's, um, I mean, there's no cost to the town. It's pretty much, you know, no risk at all for the town. Uh, the company will be taking all the, the risk as well. And the um, individuals are able to have their diagnostics. I mean, I'd, that's the most important aspect here is to make sure that when it comes to contact tracing, that there is actual, um, quarantine and isolation measures being done in order to control the spread. Um, Carolyn, you, you talked a little bit about um, the COVID numbers and um, I, I, I would like to share the numbers uh, in order just to provide some assurances and confidence. Um, if, if you guys are interested in that or the, the, the sure. public. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen, bear with me. Let's see here. So um, let me make this full screen here. So um, when it comes to at the state level, um, the numbers have dropped significantly when it comes to testing, cases, hospitalization, uh, death rate as well. Um, hospitalization rate right now looks like according to uh, Massachusetts uh, Department of Public Health, that it's about 50-50 when it comes to those individuals who are hospitalized, who are going in there because of COVID related, because directly of COVID uh, symptoms versus another reason um, and secondary comes um, with individuals being tested who also happen to test positive. Um, we now look at Deerfield, our test positivity rate, um, it has lowered significantly. I imagine, you know, if you look at the state, we're about 2.08%. I imagine Deerfield is going to be in line with that uh, once we uh, receive that data as well. So test positivity rate uh, would be about 2%, which is a really good indicator that um, cases are dropping down and that the control of the spread of the disease is manageable and it is occurring. Uh, we look at the COVID-19 new daily cases. And as we can see recently, there have been very little cases. So the fewer, the better. Um, when it comes to the vaccination rate, uh, Carolyn, uh, spot on. Um, our booster number is at 54%. We would like to increase that uh, capacity as well. 
but that 54% is in line with um, the, um, you know, at the state level as well. Um, so we're doing pretty fairly well. We're doing a little bit better when it comes to the state at 77% fully vaccination rate as well. Um, when it comes to the Deerfield monthly COVID-19 variant lab sequencing, we see that, uh, you know, in December, we see that predominantly the, you know, the dominant strain was a Delta. So it was the AY, you know, one, one, three, one, two, two, you know, yada, yada. And we had our first Omicron variant. Uh, and now we look into January. Now we have over, we had over 20 cases sequenced that were just uh, predominantly Omicron, including the B11, the BA1. And uh, we do anticipate that, you know, there might be a shift to the BA.2 as well. And in February, it was all Omicron. Omicron, as we see here in the region, um, in um, New England, uh, it is predominantly um, Omicron. So um, it's this little pink right here where the laser pointer is, that's the BA.2. And that's roughly about uh, 5%. And uh, epidemiolog epidemiologists uh, at the state federal levels are uh, anticipating that there may also be another um, you know, increase in that dominance. Uh, so we will be prepared in that measure. Uh, the latest data came, coming out from studies and research are showing that with this new variant of Omicron, if you did, if you did have, if you were infected with Omicron recently, uh, you will not be reinfected with this new sub variant. Um, and so again, in Massachusetts, total number of sequences right now, it's again, Omicron about 97% of total cases. And now we see there is an increase in Massachusetts numbers before it was zero just a week ago. Now we're seeing that um, even though it's a half percentage, it, that is going to increase uh, perhaps as, uh, exponentially as well. The reason so, that we're concerned about that, as um, Alex is saying, is because it is highly transmissible, like the original Omicron variants. But... It is also more uh, virulent in, in what its effects. Yes. And so definitely having your booster is going to go ahead and really lower your, um, you know, severe il uh, illness and uh, just further protection. And, you know, as we know, the vaccine does wane. Uh, if you look at what's going on in influenza right now with the season sort of waning, uh, there was a huge outbreak in uh, Michigan and Ann Arbor and finding that uh, the N3H1 uh, people, you know, were, you know, really sick from that as well. Uh, and people were vaccinated, but they're vaccinated, you know, you know, it, it's August, it's September. And so vaccines do wane in that regard as well. So we just need to be mindful of that and just continue public health measures. Um, I'm going to X out here. Um, so with the senior center, uh, this is the back and we're gonna have people go up the ramp uh, and, and you know have the testing facility in one of these components here. Um, and then they would just you know exit this way or if not, we will do another loop around and just exit that way as well. Um, I and mean, I we'll put them by the door so that there's good ventilation. Absolutely. So that's that's pretty much all I have at this time. Good. Thank you, Alex. Jennifer Remillard has her hand raised. I don't know if you're taking comment or because she's the director. So that works. Is something specific to do with the senior center? Or? I don't know. Jen? Um, I just wanted to speak as the director, not as a constituent. Okay. Um, if you're going to move ahead with that, I don't know what back ramp you're referring to. Um, I assume you mean along the back of the building in front. So I just need to make sure that everything is out of there. So let me know when that plan is uh, going to occur. 
Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Because we have a lot of stuff on the other side and life path is still in that part of the building. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. We just, we're going to put the table by the door so that there's good ventilation. Um, and I don't, I don't anticipate that we would have very many, you know, people coming through would be fairly maybe steady, hopefully, and not, you know, not very many people there at once. Yeah, just because if, if they're going to be going up the back ramp, there's no ramp in the front for them to leave. So if they need assistance, they would have to go out the same way they came in. There's no yep. ramp in the front. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we figured that. Okay. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Oh, Alex, you needed to speak on the... Um, about the company? Oh, yes. So uh, uh, the company is uh, with uh, from the other towns. Yes. Yeah, so I called up um, uh, East Hampton and also um, uh, Southwick um, and spoke with the health directors there. And uh, they were telling me that um, they have no problems whatsoever when it comes to uh, setting up um, and working with the company as well. Um, in fact, it's, it's, uh, they they think it's really i mean uh so in east hampton uh they also work in conjunction with uh, north hampton as well and um uh they're they're talking about minimums that they have to reach as well um but i i the perspectives that i heard um uh, coming from uh the residents of is all positive news uh, just wonderful uh communication with the company and with the town and with the health department, uh, any sort of um, issues that um, were, came up were, were, were identified and, and, and finding a, a creative solution. I mean, uh, this is a really good company. It is uh, known nationally. It is um, in the region as well. They operate in many different states as well. They have partnerships with um, Massachusetts and um, it's just a really good uh, company and uh, they're providing this level of service, which is just uh, really critical at this time. And their continued efforts is is really what we need in order to be uh, prepared uh, within the months or coming up as well. Uh, and, and just being prepared um, if if there is any sort of change uh, with the landscape of COVID. <laughs> and as we all know, it is everything rapidly changes and stuff like that. So, yeah. In, in Southwick, I just heard from uh, the health director, and uh, they're having the first um, testing this Saturday, um, and uh, they, they were originally supposed to do it earlier, but uh, something happened. I think it was weather um, um, a factor as well, so they moved it, uh, but I, I will uh, provide an update as well uh, within uh, the upcoming days as well and following up next week. Um, so I would make a motion to approve... Um, uh, our, I, I guess this would be our relationship moving forward with this company. I'll, I'll second for discussion. Okay. So there's discussion? Yeah, just um, so we're clear on where we're using that building and not using, I mean, because we aren't using the building because of the way it is, but. Right, we, we were clear with them that. They, and they've come and seen and they're like, they're not gonna get here and go, oh, we need a better space. They understand what it is yeah. or else we'll just not be using it or they're not right using. right right i right. mean they I they have a kiosk available but the problem is they have Bad. they're in 40 different states and of course this is a lot of people want it so they, there's a back order on the kiosk for like six weeks right. so yeah. by yeah. then i would see that with this would be petering out the weather's getting better right. hopefully this, uh, numbers will keep re this is just the transition so yeah is we're li lifting the mass mandate yeah. at the schools and you know for that you know month or so i mean i'm i'm looking at this as very temporary because right. yes. they gave us a deal by not having any minimum but that's right if they won't get anybody coming to get tested then they're they probably are going to move if, on yes. that's so, right and in fact they told us i i feel like this is part of how we keep this under control is to offer you know convenient testing the, even in the surge of the Omicron um, and all their reporting, it was between still between 24 and 48 hour return on the PCR 
tests. So I, I, I feel like if people went somewhere on the weekend and they had a concern, they should get a test. If, if it's not gonna cost them anything, why not? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna go away and you're having a family gathering, get a yeah, test. A lot of times you need a, right. you're gonna travel or something, you're gonna have to show a test. Right, so, so mm -hmm. this would be a con for convenience only for our community and it's yeah. no cost, so why not? And yeah, and I don't, and just, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't antici anticipate this to be a routine kind of thing, like, you know, uh, a frequency, you know, two times or three times a week and then continuing for months on end. I, I don't, I mean, the whole agreement is as a temporary basis. And so if the, if, if it goes well for two weeks, you know, we, we have the right to go ahead and say, I think we're good right now. If you, if we could go ahead and go back to this um, at, at a different time uh, and, and we can work with them with other options like the kiosk as well. So um, they are well aware of the, of the, of the situation and, and they're happy and they're glad to work with us. So I just don't want to lose this opportunity. Are there other communities allowed to come and use it? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's for Happy South County. I mean, this is basically Not South County. Okay. I, mean, I I'm I was doing this as I mean, as anyone can come. Great. But it I, I had gone to the other boards of health and I was trying to get us all to agree to, you know, support Darius in his recommendation of lifting the mandate, mass mandate on the 14th, because we were all over the place initially. Some people wanted to keep it till the end of the year. Some people wanted to keep it till good weather, you know, and I was on the fence, like, let's, let's do it till it's good weather at least. But then, you know, what's good weather? Sometimes good weather we have, today. we have 50 something degree weather, and then the next day it's single digits. So yeah. the idea, this is too arbitrary. So right. I, I just felt that we needed to support Darius. And this is one way we could support him by making sure that there was adequate testing. And, okay. and so senior center were, were convenient. It's a through fare here for a lot of different. Yeah. yeah. And so it's easier, sure. I think. Okay. Very good. Well, great. Thank you for the work on that. Well, it was kind of exciting, actually. Yeah. I, I feel like we're really doing a service. So I vote yes. All those in favor? All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carol. Hi, Dave. I just didn't want you to forget. The I, know. I know, I know. That's why I said I vote yes. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so. And, and, and uh, just for discussion, um, Alex has given us the public health job description for our review. So if we could review it. And I, I have it. I got it. Well, do you want to print your copy of it? No, which. Okay. This is not to discuss tonight. This no, is just have, for yeah, just for the review, so you okay. could read it and think about it. Okay. Okay. So thank you, Alex. Welcome. Have a good night. <laughs> yes, you too. So Diana, if you don't mind starting a few minutes early. Yeah. No, I, I'm okay. happy to start a few minutes early. How are you? Welcome. I'm I'm good. Nice good to, to see you. See you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Wolfram. We've never met before. No. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it feels good to be sitting on this side of the table. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm, a, I'm a select board in that room. Yep. So uh, I guess I wanted to come in a little bit to talk about the fact that the chamber has relocated to his airfield with yeah. the visitor center. We're really excited about it. Very happy to have you in town. Yeah, we're really happy to be here. We're, we're getting settled in, we're getting there. So, but I thought it might be good. I, I, I assume these meetings are um, available for people to watch. Yes. So I thought it might be good to have a little bit more information for people and for you as a board too, sort of really exactly why we're here and what we're going to be doing. So. Uh, the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce also serves as the Franklin County Regional Tourism Council. There's 16 regional tourism councils through the state, and through grant funding through the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, we promote uh, visitation uh, here to Franklin County. Uh, we do that by, we focus on outdoor rec, we focus on our arts and culture, we focus on our craft beverage, and we do a lot of promotion it's kind of a secret because a lot of people don't know we do it. Nothing we do can happen within a 50 mile radius. So people don't see the digital ads. 
they yeah. do because they're all pushed out further for obvious reasons yeah. really to inspire um, people to come from over 50 miles and preferably spend the night. So that's one of our jobs um, at the chamber. As you know, we have the visitor center that's been located in the registry of motor vehicles for a long time in a corner. I didn't personally feel it was worthy of Franklin County. Uh, there was, you know, even when I first came on years ago in this position, you know, there was talk about finding a new location for it. And I, I did do a lot of looking mm -hmm. um, in the first year I was here. COVID hit, it became less of a priority. Uh, people weren't moving around. But then when people started moving around, what were they doing? They were moving locally. Yeah. They were kind of staying within the state. And there was a lot of people coming up to Franklin County, particularly in the summer of 2020 for outdoor rec. And, but what also became apparent was that the registry of motor vehicles, it remained closed for a very long time, so we didn't have access to the space, and now it's by appointment only, so we really still don't have access to the space um, for the purpose we were using it. So finding a new location became much more of a priority. We looked all over the place. Um, my motto was that everything was on the table. We mostly looked in Greenfield, but we looked at places in, in Montague, uh, various places here, mm -hmm. and then we put out a request for proposals and, and had a really great um, proposal from Historic Deerfield that could accommodate the chamber offices too, which meant if we're co-located, we can run the visitor center much more hands-on than we were ever able to with it being um, part of the registry. So we have moved. That was fun. 104-year-old agency moving was a big job. Uh, we're, we are settling in. We have, you know, some things we can't get like everyone else because of supply chain issues. We have to wait until the ground thaws to have our Comcast line run. Ah. So right now we're operating off of hotspot, which is a little bit wonky, but we're, we're going to make it work because we know it's really temporary. Uh, and then, so we've, we've been trying to settle in our offices first. And now we're going to turn our attention to the visitor center. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what the visitor center was going to look like. Um, it's in where we're sharing space with the museum store, which is the little brown house right next to the inn. Yep. Really lovely. Uh, the room in the back, if you've ever been in there, was a lot like a book room. Yep. So it's set up perfectly. It's just lined with shelves. So it's just waiting for all of our brochures and information uh, to be put up there. So there'll be mostly brochures from Franklin County, uh, you know, Northfield Mountain and Crump and Fox and Berkshires and all of the things yeah. that we like to promote. Um, but we'll also have some information about all the other um, regional tourism councils in the state. So we do co-promote and, yeah. and help promote each other's areas. So there'll be some nice information there. People, um, even locals want to come in because yeah. they can grab a brochure about the Cape or- Sure you know, the islands or the Berkshires. So we'll have all of that information. We're gonna make it very um, visually appealing. So there'll be a big uh, TV that's hung up that we'll use to scroll um, the tourism videos that the chamber has produced over the years. Uh, we have several that are really beautiful, some about tourism in general. We have some craft beverage. We just produced one about fly fishing on the Deerfield River. Oh, nice. Last year, it's beautiful it's really well done we had a local um, local company produce that uh, so those are actually available we have a youtube channel and i think there's links on our web website too if anyone wants to see them but that's what visitors will see when they walk in these scrolling three minute videos about all these great things that there are to do around here and then there'll be a couple of other digital screens where we'll probably be flashing some of the photography that we um, pay for every year. We, we keep a, a really updated library of beautiful photography from throughout the county. And, and hopefully there'll be one screen that's maybe some sponsored content from local businesses that want to um, get their message out about what, what's going on there. So we think it's gonna be, its mission is to encourage people to stay a little longer, explore a little further or come back. And we think we're gonna be able to do a much better job of doing that in the new location. Great. I know, we're really excited. So we did, I thought I would bring, these, this is our most recent brochure. We partnered actually with some, with another RTC in the area to, to do one. Uh, so it's got a lot of information about all of Western Mass. Cool. Uh, this is the Franklin County version. And I also brought 
something we've just started is um, it's called the Vintage Valley Trail. So it's going to be it's a, it's a website uh, that's going to it's it, it's basically a trail that will let lead people to all of the different really funky vintage um, related businesses throughout Franklin County. So we're just building that. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that we do. Um, so we're excited. Welcome. Um, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it, we feel very welcomed here. Um, it was a tough decision. It was not an easy decision to leave Greenfield and to leave the offices that we had. It really was uh, tough. And we, we turned over every stone looking for the best possible location. Um, but we think that where it is um, is important, but what it, the message that it's giving is, is really what's, what's um, of the utmost importance. So some of the things, we, two things we need to work on that we may need your help with. One is gonna be some signage. So we do need to let people know that it's there. It is a little off the beaten path. So I do, I've downloaded the regs from MassDOT. There, it looks like they're pretty specific about what you can call yourself based on what you offer for services. So I'm going to decipher those and then figure out where we might want some signage. But it really makes sense to have some signage down in the Yankee Candle Treehouse right off 91 area directing people up to the visitor center. And then honestly, we're going to need to build a little team of volunteers. So I'm hoping that maybe there's um, some people in here in Deerfield and we'll, we'll certainly um, talk to other communities too. You know, maybe they love the area. They like to socialize and meet people and it might be a nice opportunity because one thing the state does not give us is funding to operate the visitor center. So we're trying to have it staffed as much as possible um, with volunteers. Having us there means during the week, we're, pr we're pretty good, although having people in as a volunteer would still be wonderful, right. but the weekends is what we're gonna be looking for. So I'm gonna reach out to the Council on Aging and um, I've already talked with uh, Deerfield Academy to see if maybe some students might want to. So I'll try to build build that little, little team. We'll be tracking where people come from, which I think will be really fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, a, in an informal way, we, right. we're not going to be too technical about it, but it'll, I think it'll be really, really interesting. It, it's going to give us, being right there is going to be so much better for us, particularly in terms of really making those connections with people and fanning them out into the county because there really is so much to do here. Yeah. Yeah. So we think we can do a good job of painting that picture down there. Very Thank you. That. Thank yeah. you very so much. You're in Deerfield. Right? Yep. I do. I feel like this area has so much to offer, not just Deerfield, but the region, mm -hmm. the whole valley really mm -hmm. has so much to offer. It's really beautiful. Worldwide. Isn't and it? Just and there's anywhere. lots of cool things happening. Another thing we're doing um, is we're embarking on a branding, a, like a branding project for Franklin County. I'd call it a rebranding, but I don't feel like we really ever had a branding. Right. And we've, um, we were able to secure extra grant funds this year to do this. We've hired a local company, uh, a local marketing firm. They actually did the branding for um, the Hampshire County um, Tourism Council, which is located in Northampton. Uh, and it's really, they did a great job with them. They, they, it's that up, they, they branded them as the other side of Massachusetts and it's, it, lets you know where it is exactly because Franklin County, there's Franklin counties all over the country. So um, we, you know, we're, we're working on that. We had a, um, did a survey, um, had some really good responses and they just did a discovery presentation. Uh, we did it as a Facebook live last week, which was great. And a lot of people attended and it was really interesting to see the feedback they got both from locals and from travelers, sort of how they perceive Franklin County. So that'll sort of inform how we move forward from here. So a lot going on, yeah, a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot going exciting. on. Yeah. Yeah. It is exciting. It's, it I is. think it's a time when we should really be, you know, we have a new yeah. um, tourism related business here that's gonna right. be bringing lots of people in and we wanna make sure that we're able to capture them and, and let them know how much there is to do um, while they're here. Maybe, maybe yep. have them stay the night do a couple of different things. I mean, there's really a lot. I mean, just double-edged theater and, as I said, Crump and Fox and Northfield Mountain and Poet Seat. And, I mean, I could go on and on. I get, I love yeah. talking about it, but there's yeah. really a lot of, lot of things going on. So yeah. that's what we're up to. That's awesome. 
I'll be in touch with Casey. Right. Um, if I if I have any problems with signage, maybe it'll go smoothly. I'm sure it will. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I won't need any help. Yellow lights, yellow and black. Um, what, what you have to do is just call all the time, <laughs> as you know. Well, we had a lovely lunch last week, which, which was really great. We've we've talked about maybe having regular, you know, regular meetings, which we, I do with some um, administrators from other communities. Um, so I think it makes sense for, um, I like to know what's going on in communities. Uh, and I think it's good for communities to know what, what the chamber is doing, not just on the tourism side, but then the whole chamber side, because there's a lot going on there too. But yeah. I know you guys don't, probably don't have all night. <laughs> so. can, I, can I say something? Sure. Hi. Um, I, have have, I have some experience with doing um, directional signs with MassDOT, so. Oh. And we can talk. Looks like she wants to talk. <laughs> I will be in touch. Good. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah we we did. I, I you know we I meet we meet quarterly with some other communities, and it's just nice to touch base, particularly on the economic development stuff that might yeah. be happening. And you know we we really like to know um, what's going on and where there where there might be places we can help. Right. So I, it looks like you have a long agenda. <laughs> I, I didn't even have a meeting this week, which is totally amazing. But here I am at yours. Right. Well, thank you. For coming. Thank you nice, for coming. Nice, yeah. nice to see you. Nice to yes. meet you. Okay. And thanks yeah. so much. Okay. So we're, we're going to have an opening. People should stay tuned. We're hoping to do it in uh, mid-April. It's a little aggressive, but we're yeah. we're really hoping to do that, and it'll coincide with a breakfast program we have because you know we do breakfast every month. Um, that's going to focus on the um, economic impact of tourism in Franklin County. So we'll have some folks coming out from Mass Office of Travel and Tourism to speak to that and with really hard numbers, which will boggle people's minds, to be yeah. perfectly honest. Well, so. it's great, great yeah. stuff. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, have a great night. Yes, please. Do. Yes, thank you. thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. So, do we want to review minutes? Oh, or just I, I read through the minutes. Um, I read through the minutes. I'm, I'm all set with all of them. Do we want to do them as a group or do you want them individually? I just said do them as a group. They're presented, so I'll just list which ones they are. Mm -hmm. They are oh, the tap drawn. I did the other day. And then I know. I was going to say there's one from 2020. All right, so there's the fourth, one, 21st, 12, 2022. Yep. And then they go progressively backwards. Mm -hmm. We have November 4th, 2020. No, that, um, October. October 21st, 21st and October 5th, 5th of yeah. 2020. So there's three 2020 and one 2022. Okay. We've got two people working on them, so that's why we're mm -hmm. sort of different okay. opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, good. Going back to 2020s was trying to remember, but it looked October like it was. 5th, October yeah. 21st, November 4th. I know. Now I remember. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So I make a motion we approve the minutes as presented January 4th, 2022, November 4th, 20, October 21st, 20, and October 5th, 20. We'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Tara McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Uh, next thing is. Uh, This discussion item. Okay. Oh, I said discussion item. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing on our discussion items is, um, as a board, we wish to express our condolences to Chris Collins's family. Uh, he was such an asset for the town of Deerfield uh, and for Franklin County, and. Uh, 
was for myself it was always a pleasure working with him. Yep. But, um, it's really sad. But um, he did a wonderful job for Afkaya and just he, he's going to miss him a lot. So. Um, yeah, I would second that. That he he's been such a um, a force in in bringing local government to the people and making it relatable to the everyday person that. Uh, what is going on? He, he was always interviewing um, politicians, local. You know, he's my first person I talked to when I ran, and he did an you know he did an interview with me, and I was so nervous. Uh, it was on Elm Street at the time, and I'd never been before a camera, and he was you know he was just so <laughs> kind and like asked me hard questions, but just really was made me comfortable um, and and made it. Um, it made local government accessible to people to know what's going on. Of course, he had a lot of commentary on sports and uh, was always at a game or doing all kinds of other things. Um, but he really had a, had a passion in his heart for local government and, make, and communications and making sure people really knew what their government was working on and doing. Um, I'll just miss that tremendously. And I think making sure that our meetings are public and we have people speaking and people are involved and want to get involved with local government and um, either by interviewing or by participating. It's really important and uh, just find, I wish we could find another way to, to keep his name alive and his memory alive and, and doing what we do every day. So. I guess the thing that I appreciated is he was always um, willing to pass on information, whether it was um, the swine flu epidemic in 2009 or you know this pandemic he had informational um you know interviews that yeah. were able to to you know inform people what we were trying to do and what was appropriate for people to um do for behavior and yeah. so i'm going to be you know sad that we don't we have you know he was a resource yeah absolutely and uh so, yep. yep. Wish his family the best, and we're trying to keep on that legacy. Yeah. The uh, next thing on our agenda is the. Uh, Can I say one other thing about that: um, his services have been postponed. So, if people were because of the snow. Oh right! It was supposed to be Friday. Was his his calling hours in Greenfield, and they've been moved to the following Friday, from what I understand. Jonathan, I'm not 100% sure. I just know that it's been. At least that's what I had heard at the time, and maybe there'll be an update in the paper. Yeah, asking about uh, Chris's services because of the snowstorm. They're not this Friday. They're but not this Friday. They moved to next Friday, March 4th, I believe, the same time. Same time, next Friday, March 4th. Double check what that is. I want to go on right Yeah, the there may be something in the paper or something on that. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. So now we have a certificate of appreciation for the South County Senior Center Program Director. Seeing I have some bias in it, I'll let somebody else read it. I'll be happy, happy to. Um, but she did give me peanut brittle. She did? Yeah, All right, so, so she's bribing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has worked uh, so hard in transitioning us. And I'm, I'm talking about Susan Corey, our program uh, director at the South County Senior Center. And I, I say program director, but she has been the glue for so many years um, holding us together as we've transitioned um, directors and, and even when we've had good you know, directors working, she's always been there for our seniors um, and, and all our residents to, to take care of um, to take, take care of us and bring it's her dedication. Them. Yeah, it, it really um, she goes above and beyond constantly. Um, so so recognition and, and uh, commending Su Susan Corey. Corey, for her service uh, to the sen senior centers, uh, senior citizens of Deerfield, where Susan Corey has provided con uh, continuity. Continuity. Uh, oh, thank you. Continuity. Maybe you should read this. <laughs> continuity uh, of the operation of the South County Senior Center and its programs, ensuring the safety of the senior citizens attending the South County Senior Center from 2020 to 2022 during the unprecedented times of COVID-19 and whereas Susan Corey has given selfishly 
of her time to promote and protect the interests and the well-being of the senior citizens of Deerfield, as well as those of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, whereas Susan Corey is deserving at this time of special recognition and uh, commendation. Now, therefore, the Deerfield Select Board recognizes and commends Susan Corey for her unfailing commitment to the betterment of our community and our community's senior citizens. And we thank her and we extend her the utmost appreciation for this time and her continued work with the South County Senior Center given this 23rd of February, 2022. Yeah. So, see her in person. Huh? <laughs> we'll have to see her in person and thank her. Well, she, yeah. she just knows if I was reading it, I'd probably have some snide comments. <laughs> I, have I just want to make sure she knows how much we are appreciative of Absolutely. her efforts Absolutely. and the extra all the extra work she did for seriously months. And I think those of you who don't know Susan is my niece, so yeah. <laughs> that's why we have this little. <laughs> oh, very nice. um, oh, sorry. and I know that. Um, Thank you so much, Sue. Appreciate everything you're doing. Absolutely. And I think uh, Jennifer was working on trying to make sure she had a little time off, maybe to try yeah. and help uh, enjoy her, you mm -hmm. know, enjoy a little bit of respite because she she certainly deserved it. With all she's done. Um, done she us. worked pretty tirelessly yeah. to keep things together. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. The next thing is the ratification of the um, MOU for uh, Amherst Town. Uh, Deerfield Wastewater Operators. So this is the MOU that Kevin actually brought to us a couple months ago. And what it does is it defines the expectations of both Amherst and Deerfield to continue wastewater operation, utilizing some of the resources that Amherst has in terms of staff. It would include training and uh, familiarization and staffing on both sides if necessary to assist both towns if they need that support. Um, Amherst was very gracious in reaching out to us through some help with our engineering company to provide this assistance. They, they operate water and wastewater treatment systems, so they have both, they have the capacity for both things. And so we work with the superintendent, Chris Miller and I, with the superintendent and assistant superintendent to go over the language, identify the attachments in terms of contact information, pay rates, etc. So yeah. um, I signed on behalf of the board so that yep. we could facilitate this quickly. Yep. And yep. my request was simply to ratify the signature and I haven't received uh, the town manager, Paul Bachelman's return but i do know that chris miller is working already beginning to work with the hammer staff to start training that was okay. the reason i brought up the very thing because we're actually just starting to try to get to coordinate that training between yep. the two departments okay. so shall we need a vote i'll make a motion to approve the waste water the deerfield wastewater agreement to the uh between the town of Angus and the town of deerfield and, and, and I will authorize in case you, and, oh yes, authorize in case you, and I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Caroline. I, Dave Wilson. So, so, yeah. Um, can I can I just ask what we're so um, what are we doing with the, our applications for the wastewater operators? So what we're doing, we have to go through a process, a, a hiring process, and so I was okay. trying to get in touch with uh, Dave Griffin about that. Okay. Um, speaking of that, and the reason the capital request revision is on the agenda was discussion at after discussion at. 
capital and the finance committee and then capital again. Um, Trevor and I need to make some tweaks to that. I just don't have, I, I, I need a number. I need what, 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 what we need is we need the uh, uh, correct amount to be put in the proper year. We, we have an amount for 22. Yep. which needs to be updated with the actual amount yep. that we spent. Mm -hmm. nice then um, we changed the phase two. So that would be 23 this year's request. We had voted to, to do the reorganization of that phase two. Mm -hmm. And then there's the phase three when we need to put that in. So we need the total of what whatever it is. Um, the 22, but we have authorized 19. So that 19 has got to be put somewhere in the schedule and then in parentheses, the additional amount Which further on. Which we need on. to go to town meeting for. You're right. So are you talking phase three? Uh, well, no, so it's a little confusing. So we had phase one, we pulled some of phase two into phase that, one, yeah. and then we have, so, balance that we're going to do in phase two is, is up to that 19 million yeah. and then we have phase two alternates which and are, so this is the problem yeah. i don't know that we can even define that because we haven't gotten, we've gotten well we need to do we need to put down as much as we can correctly yeah for um the auditors and the yeah. you know usda thing and then somehow we need to star asterisk well, this needs to go to town meeting still or right. whatever seven, Some, we'll something needs to be them. on the plan that identifies that this has not been appropriated yet because the 19 has been already appropriated right. but this is what we intend to do in 2025 or right. whatever exactly. okay yep. I can it's just that i i didn't it's have it's yeah. hard to parse. It's right. Great. I didn't have, okay. even looking at the charts, Trevor, I didn't have a, a grasp on what, what should be listed for what year mm -hmm. it's true. correctly. It's you true. know, the numbers have. You they know, move constantly. Yeah. They do move constantly. That's my concern. I know. Yeah. So we just have to do the best we can yeah. to move forward on that. And it, I think we can do that. Yeah. Because we have also the contingency piece to keep in mind. Right, because that moves from one phase to the other when we don't use it in this year, before we move it to the next one as a change order of phase one, and then we have phase two and phase two alternate. So it's kind of, but I'll, I'll lay them out there because I know we want to try and get those. We want Waterline to bid them because they're there already and you don't have right. that mobilization charge. So. Well, and they're a good contractor. Yeah, well, good I mean, let's, yeah. let's face it, we want a no hassle, excellent yeah. contractor. Yeah. 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 So we'll, I know Dave's working on that stuff, but I'll just figure out what years they would be spent in. I, I, I'm sorry okay. to make you do that. I just yeah, couldn't fine. do that. Can I just ask a question though? What I, so in the FY22, the intent was to reflect what the contract is. Um, in but that, you wanna, but because that, that year, amount. but that year is already, we're in that year. So you want to put down what we actually are spent. What that, this, what, what that, well, not what we actually spent because we haven't, we, we changed haven't it spent every month, what but what we approved that What's 16 million, approved? right? Yeah. And we yeah. haven't really approved the change order and we have not approved alternates two yet. Right. Days two it has to be two. what is actually intended. Correct. Yeah, I believe we can lay that out as yeah. a line underneath that well, line. That's what I mean is the intention is really the contract. The contract right. itself is the intent to pay. Right. That's why you see that thirteen million and then the five points. And and what we'll do is next when we come to next year, then we can fix the numbers mm -hmm. as to the actual because it's actual. already done. The year's finished, and then you can just adjust mm -hmm. what is proposed or happening depending on the twenty. Because we'll next year we'll be working on twenty four. So whatever isn't finished in 23 will go into 24. So you are working on 23, and then you're proposing for 24. But we need to, the number for in 22 right now is not correct based it on what- It should be 16 million, blah, blah, blah. It's not, it's like 13 million or something. We'll, we'll That's what I mean, right. it's the contract price. Yes. It's not the bid price. That's the difference because remember we had to back off the bid price 
in order to actually accomplish the contract elements that we wanted to get to. That's why it's 13 million, not 16 million, because what's actually in the contract price is what's reflected there. Because remember, we changed some things. The alternates changed the total. The initial total that came in was 16 million, but then we made adjustments in terms of activities between phase one and phase two, and the total contract price became 13 something. That's what I'm saying. Is well, the, the 22 is reflects 16, the 16, right? Yeah, but we didn't. We're, we're, on a we're in 22 right now. We settled on a cost, contract cost of 13. The town's contract is, is 13 million. Well, where's the other? It's out there. Well, that's the thing. It's out there. We didn't sign the 16 million. We don't know. Okay. Well, we, did, we approved it, right? And then that's what we signed was the. That's what was the first twelve. That was our was adjustment. Space. Our adjustment, and we You're it right. should read. It's a little of both. It is a little of both because I mean, our contract not, is for sixteen not a, million. It's not a total sixteen million. The contract reflects some of those changes that were all changed, and so the bid recommendation from DPC was not sixteen million. It was once we added the other all. Back in the day. No, I have. No, it's that's what I mean. What's on those payables is what we should be, is, is what I'm saying we need to be careful oh, how we well, reflect it because this well, is the detail two, we're two trying to find through. So you've got, you've got the first loan, then you've got the second loan with USDA, but they total a project that we're paying waterline of 16 million. What, what, once well, you got. Not only waterline, but DPC for their engineering. You, and, sit, and, yes, you need to sit down, right. And all that. You need to sit down and yeah, figure that. out what is current for 22 right now we're in, and then what what is the difference for 23. Yeah, that's it's not going to affect it out, but, yeah. CIPC's bottom line because right. it's already in there total, yeah. but how it's broken out in the schedule needs to be fixed. Yeah. All right. So you guys just will have to sit down and fix it. I just want to make sure I understand where you're coming from. But we'll do that offline. Okay. Uh, Community Preservation Act funds applications. So you guys had a conversation about the old grammar store. Are there any other applications that you wanted to pursue that we haven't discussed? Oh, for, for Green Community Center? No, for Community Preservation Act funds. Oh, you so you have those. Well, I had, um, the, I, I don't know if this board needs to discuss the town common. Town, the town common committee applied to CPA mm -hmm. for um, the 350000 yep. to to get started on that, on that project. Um, whether they would fund the whole thing or a portion of it, and we'd use ARPA for the other, or capital stabilization for some of it or split it three ways or not do anything at all. I don't, you know, it's really up to, I know we have to look at the whole plan and what the capital plan shows, but um, I think it was worth asking for because it is a recreation park, it is historical, it fits kind of all the needs of CPA funding um, as, as a place that we do memorial services and- I, I think we can do, I'm not really sure how uh, how much we can spill out from the Leary lot, but if we're doing the Leary lot, some money can go towards that. So if, right. um, I, I mean, I think it's an opportunity to get it done. I think it's an, at least have I a really like good that start. Common is really, I mean, it's, I'm a little biased because I've worked on it for four years, but it's still, I feel like it is a starting point to grow the rest of the town. Like we get, that well, we're section done. this is start, and we're we're doing the park, and yeah. we're doing the Leary we lot, and we do the common, the and then we squeeze in and do the campus. Yeah, yep. I just feel like it's a bookend, and then we, we maybe can get some some blue streets money. And That's stuff. what do, so that was the other question. So do those streets? With that is do we pursue complete streets with Cog and yeah. let them? I think because the Cog has the resources to do help us with complete, complete mm -hmm. streets. Yeah. And I think they'll do the grant administration around that 
that's one thing about the cognitive life. Well, I, I just, you know, then I'll bring up the 319, as long as you're reaching out to the cog, I really, really want us to pursue, in a normal year, the state can hardly pay, pay you know, get somebody to do the 319 grants, you know, and, expend, and, and expend the money. I, you know, there's at least 20 to 30 more million dollars coming down in the 319 program. So if, if Kimberly um, McPhee from the PERCOG is willing to do the grant writing and the grant management, so Casey doesn't have to do it. I mean, it, there's 15% administrative expense, but if Casey just wants to pass it on to them instead of having to do it, um, I mean, 319 is not that complicated because we've done a, quite a few of them through the conservation district. But if Casey doesn't feel uh, have any problem with that, then I would just say, let's let's pursue the 319 because part part of the thing that we want to do is, I mean, we really want to work down here. We're trying to revitalize this whole area, and Bloody Brook goes down right through the middle, and so it makes total sense for us to try to you know, work on the Bloody Brook. And um, uh, I know that, um, you know, we'll get the grant, whatever it is gonna be for expense. But the idea is to, you know, look at storage capacity upstream from the Bloody Brook, as well as work in the Bloody Brook to, you know, make sure that there's better flow and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But you are trying to do storage capacity. So when we have these intense events, there is, um, you know, not all the water rushing down through the middle of town. And if we're truly going to invest all kinds of money over here and do all these expansions, we certainly don't want to be a flood risk. Right. So, um, you know, and and this is a time to work with the Mosquito District because, you know, Chris isn't out trapping and testing, you know, sending the stuff out to be tested. So he can work with that. Um, um, I talked to Dottie um, at the, she's executive, sec, uh, executive director for the Mass Association of Conservation District, uh, Conservation Commissions, not districts, commissions. And um, so she's going to look at the NOI that um, we're using for a uh, template. And uh, it's a bundled NOI. So it allows you to do like maintenance of ditches and culvert mm -hmm. and stuff. So um, I think we can get it for a couple thousand dollars, we can have an engineer, once I talk to Dottie, we can use an existing template from Beckett that we sent her, mm -hmm. or she's gonna try to find something better for us, given what we wanna do. And then for a thousand or two dollars, you know, one or two thousand, we can have an engineer put it together for us and, and get through the Conservation Commission and that would allow us to do annual maintenance, huge, which would be huge, because through the 319, we'll figure out some kind of approach uh, to work with, on the Bloody Brook, but then you, you know, there'll be annual maintenance, which would be lovely. So, and it's yeah. not, and the bundle NOI wouldn't be just for Bloody Brook, it would be for all the culverts we need to clean and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And so it would be automatic every year. Right. And it's good for, you know, you apply for like two or three years at a time. So for the for the common project itself, do, do we want to request, uh, do we support the town common committee's request for CPA for the funding, or should, do we want to use something else, or how do, I mean, I think it's worth asking and having them deliberate on it, and if they say, well, we can only do this, or we can do that, then we know what we have left to I, I to think we should go forward, because what we're going to get from the um, complete streets, what yeah. we're going to do in the Leary lot, the, the, the design, on work needs to be updated, you know, the design needs to be updated. So we don't really know what the cost is going to be. Right. And then I was going to bring up on unanticipated would be um, we could put in the green infrastructure part of the Leary lot in an MVP application. Yeah, um, we could be a little hesitant on that until we get clarification from the Attorney General. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, th I personally think so. Because you know, that could get dragged out. We might have to put it on town meeting again. And we need somebody else to write that plan and administer that plan. Yes. Not our staff. Okay. Well, but I, I think I just, it's worth looking at. I yeah. just don't want to put in the grant that we can't 
yeah. actually start because we don't have the ability to start because yeah. we don't have the right away that we need. Okay. Okay. So, so do we want to take a vote on the comments or not? Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, to make a motion to support the town common committee's uh, request for CPA funding of three hundred fifty thousand to complete the town common infrastructure. And I will second that. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Tom McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn. So it's basically the only applications going to the CPU right now? Well, they, Town Common did their own. Um, yeah. The other one is the one that you guys approved earlier. Yeah. So okay. that would be, that's why I asked, is there yeah. anything else? No, I think that's and Senior Housing one. sent one too. Senior Housing, right. senior housing sent one. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Do, do we need to vote on the senior housing one? I, I mean, I haven't talked to either of the two talk to you about what are. It, it's already been submitted. Right. I don't know. Sure. It's just for the feasibility study. Right. And that's what goes to the bank to make sure we have funding. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would make a motion to support that. I'll second that motion. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, John McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolf. I, um, <laughs> it's already been submitted, so. No, I, yeah, but it just shows our support. For yeah, it. yeah. We'll okay. So, okay, good. Um, so, we've got all kinds of work for Tim now. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So. Actually, I think this is one of the biggest years ever. Yeah, I think so too. Um, the, actually, the committee park project, but this is a multiple projects. Right, to, I think know, um, the yeah. whole committee is very excited. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, everybody's on board with uh, you know doing all this yeah, renovation work down here. Yeah. Figure out what it, what they can do and what we uh, got to I, do. I, I feel like we're really generating these, these some momentum. These are all momentum. things that are just going to improve the presentation of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely! So, and yeah. if we can get stuff going at these rates versus twelve percent, ten percent. Yeah, just the interest rates. I'm panicked on mm -hmm. a little bit. So, okay, uh, annual town meeting warrant. So I just wanted to give everyone an update on the town meeting warrant. I don't have a draft for you. I'll be working on that, but we may have to. Um, March twenty fifth. We yeah, March twenty fifth is the thirty day requirement to settle. The warrant, okay. you know, the the subjects on the warrant. So I just want to bring that to everybody's yeah. attention. It's, it's been busy. open since the end of January. Um, there, I haven't had very many requests. Do we ever vote to close it? We haven't voted to close no. it. We haven't closed it yet. Okay. We haven't closed it. That's what I mean. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. You'll want to, we'll want to consider closing it um, earliest. Probably we have the next March, meeting. Yeah, March 9th, but it definitely has closed. to be closed by the 23rd. Okay. We have to look at that. Okay. 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 All right. Do we have anything on the Mass DOT request for maintenance on sidewalks. So, we can I just clarify? Yeah, uh, can I just clarify? So, we're going to put a bylaw together? Is that what we're going to do? Um, you could consider that. I mean, there's more than one way to handle it. So what I would, we actually, Kevin, a couple of years ago, we did. gave it to, gave me a, a draft bylaw. Yeah. Um, no, this is and I don't, I, I think you guys should read that. So I'll, I'll see if I can hit Duncan, pick it up and send it out to you guys. Okay. But, yeah, but it's just a topic. In the meantime, I mean, DOT, maybe it's a worthwhile conversation to call DOT again. We really okay. need a meeting with that, period. And we've all been asking, I know you're, yeah, we, we contact. I don't know how many times Carol. I know. But I just need a formal when we can. I have everybody's cell phone number, so I will make sure that meeting. we call yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, we can yeah. get to. Yeah. To, no, actually, Tim yeah. Myers is very nice. Yeah, he, Tim's amazing. Well, with COVID kind of down. Let's let's all get in the room again. Uh, we need. It's a really important. They're busy chasing. Well, I'm them, sure. I have to say, yeah. they're that's one thing. They they're just as interested in even federal infrastructure grants yeah. as yeah. the town. Right. So I think they're out um, hustling on their own. Can I, and you know what I forgot? I, I so completely. So they get paid for the equipment to take care of the sidewalks. Yeah. 
So we're on sidewalks. Listen, I made forgot two announcements that I needed to make. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the climate cha uh, climate uh, change or climate forum is on April second, and Jen is putting that up on our website, and people need to register for a lovely free lunch. And it's going to be there's 33 speakers. Um, car dealerships are going to be here to talk about um, electric cars and people with solar panels are going to be here um, and have booths. So if you and then, of course, we have all these workshops. So uh, with 33 speakers. So this is going to be a really great informative day, April 2nd, all day at Frontier. Um, and, and I then, was volunteered to be there with my car dealership. Oh. Dave, thanks. And then on uh, March 10th um, is the 10 year celebration of creating resilient communities group um, is going to have uh, workshops online. So I will get more details on that, but it's basically, um, you know, river and roads. And this is the kind of thing that we were talking about working with Mass DOT and um, how we're going to go for another 10 years. So we have gotten about $60 million in um, work done in the watershed right now, and we're hoping for at least double that, and that will cover all the damage and replacement for upgrades from Irene. So this is pretty exciting work. And again, it's everyone's, all the partners are coming together to try to do infrastructure. And everything that happens upstream from us well, is a positive, positive impact on us at the bottom of the bowl here. So hopefully we'll get some culverts replaced out of this. And if anyone's interested, this will be online and then on, you can view it after that day too. Okay. Um, let's see, placeholder for budget. Yeah, I have a couple budget suggestions actually. If Jennifer's still still here, we have two things to review with you. You want to talk about contracted services, Jen? Let me get my book. Sorry, can you help me? Um, most everything. Go ahead, Trevor. You tell me to speak up. Same. Can you speak into the mic? <laughs> You're being a brat. Hold on. I can't hear it. I yelled out Wait. too much yesterday. <laughs> They're enjoying this. I'm sure. Okay, contracted services. So awful tiny or I'm getting old or it's really late. Or, <laughs> no, it's really late. full budget. So it's printed yeah. very, very small. Very, very small. So which part of it do you want me to talk can about? I, can so, I start down the list? Yeah, go ahead. So do we really need the 30,000 for the network yes. and daily backup email? Yeah. yeah. It doubled a couple years ago. It did intentionally. I uh, know. Okay, so we have a requirement to back up our email that yep. we actually have not instituted yet because we've had draws on this account okay. for unanticipated expenses. It, That's currently the cost. It, it could go up by the end. It's not going to. Um, it's not going to go to the It is. We have a contract with you. I just. That's not to say we can't go out to bid, but it's a bid. Yeah. I, Wow, that just seems so it's much been money. It's driving me crazy for two years that it's that cost. And, and, um, so what they do in terms of backup services is they monitor our computers, they monitor our yeah. email, they monitor activity and provide support if we do have like phishing emails and they've increased, I don't know how much. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we're deficient on is backing up, actually having access to email backed up because that's a public record and it's a, yeah. it's a record that we there's only certain instances where you can eliminate emails and usually it's you know, subscriptions and right. you know mailings essentially that you get through your email yeah um and that actually didn't really 
I, I work with Northeast IT quarterly doing that. So we have an external drive that they back up and then we put it off site. So if anything was to happen to town hall, we still have it. And so that's also the, the piece of that that coordinates is it helps us figure out what our recovery speed is in terms of if we lost our information or lost our computer. I'd love to go up to the Yes, I am. Yeah, I know. That is a huge bit. discussion because I'm. That's a huge bit. I don't know yeah. what we would get for. So I have to say, I don't know what we would get for um, responses. I know that several of my colleagues have gone out to bid just because they're trying to take the temperature, the temperature of the market, mm -hmm. and the market out here is pretty tight. We don't have as much access to opportunity that they do for the east because we don't have as many companies. Um, I would. Uh, I know it's, I don't, I understand what you want to do, Trevor, and I agree with you 100%. We should be going out to bid on um, at least on a regular basis. But um, through Homeland Security, we've been trying to come up with projects that we can do and pilots for the cybersecurity stuff. And you know, I hate this, but I'm actually one of the subcommittee people on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know I can't stand this stuff. But anyway, um, so that's your computer. That's your I know. Computer. I know. This is me. This is more, more what, what I want to do. That? But anyway, we're trying to come up with um, we have we have project money set aside, and we're trying to come up with templates that towns can use for going out to bid, for doing baseline security, and and. Casey's been good. She's been participating as much as possible because we've been getting free advice through mm -hmm. this group. Um, you know, obviously, I'm sitting there to try to cut our costs and to make sure that we, any money that we can, we're directing to cybersecurity here in Deerfield. Time? But um, <coughs> we're, we are trying to come up with a plan that will help Casey put together um, a bid situation. And we're trying to go out as a as counties, because uh, you know we have, and we represent 104, 101 towns and right. communities. So um, I think if I'm not saying that we should approve this, just without really going into some more detail here, but I I, I feel like it's coming. We're going to have support for small towns that don't have IT departments, and don't have support, and don't have the expertise. And just by default, it lands on Casey's desk as a town administrator. Yeah. So we're doing everything we can to support. And I'm I'm very vocal on this because you know I don't know anything, and you know I feel like this is the kind of thing that they should be supporting because it's a huge threat. Is this the only contract we have in Northeast IT? So Northeast IT, they cover a lot of things. It's email. It's it's antivirus. That sort of thing. That's what that sort of covers. But that. And I'm just saying their contract kind of just grew immensely over well, the last so, couple of years. Yeah, but they also support purchases and coordination within the network. Mm -hmm. And so that's the piece that really COVID pushed a lot of that to some extent because we didn't have resources we needed and we needed to be able to reposition ourselves very quickly. So, so but cybersecurity is a key piece. Like I can't even fill out the IT response for the cybersecurity information for my without somebody like Northeast IT. That's just not my real house. That's, that's that's why we're do. trying to come up with a um, model that will support that will support small towns. Okay. We're we're trying to come up with a model yeah. that supports small towns because this is it is getting ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. It's a wick uh, well yes, I know Trevor. I know. But it's also a boatload of money exactly if you have a I know. It's a lot of money for it, it for is a lot of money, but it's for, for look at it this way, you're not paying so so I'll reframe it. You're not paying person, you're not paying benefits, you're not paying um, vacation, you're not paying soft costs of of having a person, unemployment, workers comp, yeah. you're paying for a service. It is really but yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I just I think it's I wanna keep hammering it a little bit because I that's all. We'll come back to it. It is what it is. We'll just 
Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. Well, we are trying to come up with some solutions, Trevor. The, it, Trevor, some of the problem is, is we're not communities located in other areas of the state where we don't have mm -hmm. as many resources. And one of the things that we do need to have is a response in a relatively quick amount of time. Yeah. And that's something that you need a local company for. Now, are there other local companies? Yes, but are they going to give us the breadth of, of coverage that we need? And that's that's a question that I actually have on the table. I have a meeting with them, I think, tomorrow at two. So I will bring that question to you. Um, but the reason I wanted Jennifer to talk was we talked about the plan, planning support, so planning services. Jennifer, do you want to give them the update? Uh, oh, sure. So I called PVAC. So um, they're the Pioneer Valley Plan um, um, Planning Commission, and spoke to um, Catherine Rate, and they have a program there that's called Planning Board Assistance Program. And at the moment, they have planning assistance that goes out to, um, uh, like Granby does it, Hadley has it. And they support the planning board, the zoning board. They will do bylaw review. They will help with decisions, um, everything that has to do with planning. So they have a senior planner that works with the communities. They will attend meetings as well. And I think that this would be so beneficial for the town of Deerfield and for our boards and, you know, it just, it's so important. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to see if um, there's a possibility in this fiscal year for them to do a review of our bylaw now so that when we um, go into next fiscal year, if this is something that gets approved, um, we would be able to jump in and maybe adding different aspects to our bylaw with the help of um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So the good news is, is we found somebody to do what we need them to do, thanks to the research on Jennifer's part. Mm -hmm. And it's a point, yeah. Um, if you look at the 5,000 for grant writing, I think we need to think about that. Because you do have to enough. I don't know that it's enough. Well, I think we should take the 10,000 from the MVP consultant and put it into there. Well, maybe we, I don't know about that. What I do know is I know that if we tweak it, like last year we had 7,000 came for MVP and it turns out that the project max, max cost was higher than we thought it was going to be. And so you can't predict the project max because you don't know necessarily what you're going to approve. Um, MVP is one of those things that I have to say, it's one of the most regulated grants I've ever seen. And the amount of machinations the town has to do, irrespective of, of the grant writer, of what Chris Curtis does. And don't get me wrong, he does a huge amount of work, but the way that they force us to report on it is very labor intensive. Um, it requires me to split these bills, each bill every time to show the grant amount, the in-kind match amount, and the cash amount that the town is paying, mm -hmm. real time. That's the reason it takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 60 hours a month, because I have to do that split and I have to go back and figure out who's doing what when based on Chris's reports, the bills, and then how it all plays out in the, the percentage splits. So if we maybe reduced MVP to 7,000 and reallocated 3,000 into a general grant writing account or a general grant writing line, that might give us a little more leverage so that we could pursue other things. Mm -hmm. But one thing that, if you notice in the past several meetings, I've said, can we talk to the COG? Because one thing that the COG does is they do that background split that we don't necessarily have to do. MVP is a different type of grant. So shared streets and spaces, I have a meeting tomorrow about shared streets and spaces. Beth Janini and Laura, Lori Scarborough are gonna handle that reporting piece and they actually helped us find another grant to do some of the engineering around what we talked about. So, you know, I think maybe figure out how to leverage better what we have for money. Um, but ultimately this is your budget. So, but these were the two things that Jennifer and I wanted to bring up with you before we go back to finance committee next week and talk about these budgets on Tuesday. So, because we, there were four budgets we didn't discuss in this one. 
No, I, I mean, I would be okay even with, you know, moving MVP to seven and then moving that. I just think that the grant writing is something that we're really going to need if we're going through all these I agree. projects this next year. I agree. And 5,000 bucks is probably not enough unless you're able to pay from one line and not the other. Why, why do we have to have it split? Um, can't we have... Um, yeah. I mean, can't we put grant writing, administration, MVP all together? And so just make it a grant. I, I would, yeah. What I would want to do is make sure it's spread equitably for different activities. That's what well, I mean. but that because way we it's... We physically use that MVP as the match for this year's grant. Yeah, but it's... Right now, you know, it's not cut in stone next year what MVP grants we're going to be doing. Right, and we don't know that. We don't know what the program's going to look like either. We do know that some of these grants that are out there right now may not exist next year. Yeah. That's the reason community one stop is such a key thing. And so I have talked to Alice Virtuous. I'm waiting for a vote from um, CPC so that I could sign a contract with her. Well, what we'll about 10 hours of work for a period of time on community one stop projects, which is the small, small community, it's the rural community, and there's a small town one. There's two different identified sources of money that we could utilize based on what we know right now. Okay. Well, so one quick question. Uh, I was just going to top the bottom. It's easier for me. So the copy of rental, um, I know that there was an email flying around about maybe using somebody else or some fancy or something like that. Yeah. Oh, we did. So that's just okay. reading. Got that. And then uh, consultants, we've got that on the I think consultants may be tight. We're going to try yeah. to, to allocate our um, to find different training sources. Okay, and then the um, which may be remote trainings through, for instance, Maya. Mm -hmm. Assuming the contract looks stuck for stuck. a little while. Um, King Services. I know that you we do need to yes. We put it in and then didn't do it, and put yeah. that, but I know what needs we to have to. We don't have a choice with public right. records who they are. Training professional development fund. We need to do that. To do that. And then we, we reduce the uh, grant for solar because we're getting close to that. Do we need to do that? We're open. Open. Um, planning and grant. Yeah. So we'll come back to that a little bit. The uh, broadband is what it is. The, the now, with the broadband, can't we do something with our contracts with the tower? So we don't have to pay that. The broadband? Well, don't we rent the tower to Comcast? Yeah, but it has nothing, it's like PEG, it has nothing to do with the access that we can receive for internet. They, they're, they're separate trials. The only other thing we could do is very expensive, but it would give us a lot more fee, is if we actually went through the middle mile. Yeah. But it would be expensive. I thought about it. The middle mile, remember that drop that they had? Because I, I know the broadband from the other end of the spectrum, which is the last mile. Yeah. Um, but middle mile, Gives you a lot more speed and bandwidth. What it doesn't do, what it isn't as cheap. No, it's all, yeah, fiber optic. And so that's the thing. We have the fiber drop. It's mm -hmm. just, and I do know. I will say this: there are some towns around us that are starting to build up that broadband to their other facilities as a measure, as a way to reduce their overall costs um, for a longer period of time. The, uh Website hosting updates, Civic Plus. This is the new website. Yep, we're, so we're actually transitioning. And if you have, if you want to know more, you can look at the, the pretty little detail that says Jennifer Gannis. She's been working on it very diligently, and I appreciate her. Okay. And then, um, I have a um, um, a link that I can send you all for the sample that I'm working with. Okay. Yeah. Good to see, see that. Zoom yes, and so that's one thing. So I don't know if you all noticed. I keep trying to send you state house news articles, and they don't work for me. I don't know why. I'm just gonna make John do them. He does it so much faster. <laughs> but um, one thing that they've been pushing back is a decision on remote participation, mm -hmm. a, a statutory change in the legislature by the legislature. So they pushed back and said. We can do remote participation under the governor's orders or extensions until July 15th. Initially, last year, that was an April 1st hard deadline. 
So I don't know what machinations are going on in the background, but based on our experience, I think many of our fellow towns are experiencing an uptick in participation yeah. because people don't have to live with these very same yeah. And believe me, this makes us crazy, like functionally, because right. it's hard to do, but we, I do notice, I will say, I do notice that people participate more when they can sit in their living rooms, and sometimes it's easier to share information. So we did activate, you know, we actually, Jennifer did a lot of work evaluating what we need for Zoom. So she's given you what she thinks is a reasonable expectation. It sounds like accounting, financial software. Um, I know that we, that Barb really wanted to work with this other company, but I don't think we have the staff right now to do it this year. It's not necessarily that. We had a conversation with the auditor, and it may be worthwhile to rethink utilizing another company that doesn't have quite the capacity that software it, has. It didn't have all the stuff. Or yes. A whole lot like one. Okay. Um, if they have to do things manually, it's not worth the money. No, if it's you can separate out a certain amount to actual <coughs> sewer and <coughs> personal. So it's a minus. Amount? There's an offset, yes. Okay. Um, and the assessors map posting, what would that be in the assessors? No, okay. that's we run the contract itself. There's yeah. one okay. piece that they run themselves, but the yeah. actual contracted service for the overall stuff we run. Any general code we do, yeah. Cartograph or SRE is, is then, the element of public works. And the hash case, the yeah, that one. Is all that's the weights and measures. Weights and measures, we still haven't. Jennifer actually called them and found out what was going on. What did they say, Jennifer? They basically said that we're just over the census for the number of people by 50 that we actually should hire our own weights and measures person and pay and so we pay this amount but if we were under is it five thousand yeah, yeah 5, we're under nine thousand then the state would pay for the forty five hundred so we have this until our next census we need 50 people to move out is that what you're saying exactly <laughs> I know. I actually I asked her to call. Like, isn't it fun? <laughs> can move out? <laughs> no, what we do is we utilize the resources. Um, what is it? Division of it's not labor standards. It's it's division of standards, right? Division of standards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they actually have all that stuff, and they come out on a contract basis, and we charge the various entities that. Yeah. Need to have those measurements done. Yeah. A small amount as a as a, essentially a pass. Yeah. Okay. I think that's how it goes. So I guess the I guess the only question is do we um do we push these grant uh planning the planning and the grants and the MVPs together in the one thing and, or do we really need to be separate or what do we do? I think they've been separate before because there were separate pots of money in this in the case of MVPs that was actually showing a grant match. Mm -hmm. That was a match. Right. So that's why we've maintained it that way. And not knowing what the what the planning is for that. I think it's just important that we have some planning and we have some grant writing. Right. We need those things. At I least to figure out what else we might need. Enough. And I've explained it before. I think we need to take some time to figure out what we need in terms of planning services mm -hmm. and if PVPC can help us with that. We're, we're in better shape. Can I ask a question? How would it be, how different would it be just having it separate? Because then it wouldn't be like, oh, we have X amount of money for MVP versus X amount of money going towards the PVPC with, for a planner or like, does it, you does it matter? One. Like, the problem is, is it's harder. It's going to be harder for you to monitor it. Take my word for it. If the monitor your billing and the service needs that could come up if it's not separated. Right. So, and, and so the flip of that is, is if it's in one item with one code, um, you do have some flexibility. So it, it's a, there's trade offs to it. If the board wants to combine it, I'm okay with that. It's just we need to pay attention on the back end in our office 
how we're utilizing those funds. So, which is what you're learning how to do. Right. I was just wondering if then it's like a sub, you know, how Brenda breaks. Sub codes. Yes. It's just harder. And you want to set those up. So whatever we determine now, it goes through town meeting in terms of sub line items or cost codes is what we use and set up in the next fiscal year to identify so that we can break out what the expenditures are and, and monitor them. Okay, thank you. So if you guys want to roll it into one thing, if you want to roll grant writing into one thing and leave planning in its own yeah. silo, that's well, fine. The question I have is, so say we don't have that much going on with the MVP, but we have a lot going with planning. Do we have to go ask for a transfer from one no, to no, the other? No, because it's all in one yeah. budget. No. Okay. Well, you can yeah. use it. You, you can yeah. sort okay. of buffer it. Yeah. It's so just it's a question of like how delineated yeah. you want it to be. And I don't know what your feelings well, are. Well, okay. I, I think you should combine it so we have maximum flexibility. Because we don't know. I mean, we know we're going to be, we know we're going to be applying for all kinds of money this year. So I, I don't want to reduce the line. I think it's it's actually underfunded, considering what our what we want to do for activity. But I but I, since I don't know whether it's going to be through the FERCOG and then they take their 10 or 15 percent, or we have to come up with 10 or 15 percent because it's handled here in the office or whatever, we we need to have money in a line item for you know what we're trying to get accomplished. We, we, this is not the year to, to reduce this line item. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily disagree with you because of the conversations CCI has, you have, right. CIPC is having. So if we just write grant writing, administration, slash MVP, slash whatever, I mean, I think the planning, the planning the contract, should be that is separate mm -hmm. because we're, we already know what we're going to do. We're already going, you know, for you know, someone to, to apply for that. But everything else is, you know, I, I would want to add more money to this, truthfully. That was my suggestion, but I, I, I try to be judicious. So I do think we should add some more money to this, but that's why I asked you all how you wanted it to look, because it... I would, I would add another 10... I would add 25000 this year, total, for our... If you combine M MVP, grant writing, administration of the whole thing. Okay. That's what we have. We have 10,000, 5,000, and 10,000 in MVP. Planning, planning yeah, but separate. planning is going to be separate. separate. Planning stays separate. That is, that is for the planning board to do their regular business. It's for the technical assistance. So, yeah. So, planning would remain its own line, Jennifer. And what we would do is combine grants administration and MVP into one line, but make that total 25000 I see. But it says planning, but that also includes the zoning, right? So, right. yeah. Planning, planning assistance. Slash zoning. What yeah. I would say is planning, um, planning assistance or planning technical assistance we can refine that language we yeah. know what the intent is the intent yeah. is to provide some technical assistance and support for some of the activities that the planning and zoning boards do right this is this is planning board regular business okay this is not this is not going out and hustling money no right. and it's really the grant writing and administration that is what you would want to combine right now. yep so if we can do that, okay. So we can make that change. Okay, great. Good. And so I recollect this differently, but so the ask was for 30, what was it, 3120, Jennifer? Or 38 or something. Oh, you're talking about the um the MD. Yeah. yeah. Where did we have it? What number was it? It, it was uh 291 Thank you. We tabled this. We did. Uh, we have to finish presenting the budget, so yeah. the reason I'm bringing it back to you is... Yeah. Well, the question was, do we want to increase this at all, uh, or do we want to just roll this into some other position in town? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, just being really such a tight budget year, I just didn't know if this was something we had to continue uh, for, or 
them, or is it something that can be taken up? I don't know in other towns. Does the fire department do it, or the police department do it, or I don't know how. It, it, each town varies, but usually you have a lead person. And, you know, I, I think we could roll it back into the police department at this point. I, we, you know, we have such a tight budget. They are a lead agency in a lot of our emergency response, including COVID. They were, they were sitting in the rooms while we were making, you know, these tough decisions with the Board of Health. Right. You know, know authority of the Board of Health, authority of the Select Board, you know, just coordinating everything. So I know. it's up to you guys. But since, since we have to, we have to, we have to go back, I wanted you guys to check this. And Jennifer and I remember the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because we almost forgot. No, no, I just, um, Is it statute that we have to have a EMT? You though? have to have something allocated. So you have to have at least a line item for what? Your basic um, materials? Is no. That what it is? You just have to have someone designated. I was going to say, don't we? No, I thought we had to have someone designated. You just have to have someone designated. We never used to fund this. For years, we only put like yeah. 200 bucks in the select board budget for it. Right. And then it changed between when I left and when I came back. Well, so what we were trying to do is, I mean, we're trying to be mindful of our staff time. And, you know, we had potential to make it a bigger, you know, a bigger job. Focused so on one it. thing that the EMG does is they work on the EMPG grant, which is the emergency preparedness grant. It's somewhere between twenty four and twenty eight hundred dollars a year. It's basically it a wash. Through. It's basically a wash. And it allows you to do usually one thing. Right. Like we got for resource emergency preparedness. We yes, we got lit signs and we we've done different things and, over the you know, past. I, I commend Lori. Lori pays a, pays a lot of attention to this, and she's. We talk about, especially in the last year or so, we've talked about some of the resources we could use, and we, you know, her pursuit of that particular grant is to get us something we don't have, which is an ID machine. We have no way, up until now, to create IDs for town staff. So she. Well, we can borrow grant. one. For, we can borrow it through the cash in the Homeland Security paid for that uh, at the FERCOG. So there, there is one. At the FERCOG. But yeah, so that's what we did with the grant yep. this year was utilize it for that. And the grant is just one step. Um, so um, it's up to you what you want to do, but before we go to finance committee, I wanted you to take a look at it. And do you want to uh, approve it as is and then just, you know, as we get to finance and we can find a budget if we have to cut something that's one we have to cut. I mean, I think. Well, we should level fund it. Right. And um, at least we should level fund it, and then we then we look at it as one of the ones on the table. Maybe. Yeah. So what do you want to fund it at? Um, twenty six hundred. So that's two percent. Lori's request was to go up to. Thirty. Thousand dollars. Thirty thousand or thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred that she requested. And so that was a considerable increase, certainly over two percent that's been discussed for four years. We're, well, we're trying to keep our budgets as much in line as possible. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to level fund it at this point. You want to level fund it? Yep. And then we'll have to see this will be one of the ones that be on the table. Okay. So level fund the EMG. Yeah. Yeah. I I just I mean I understand. Uh, we, uh, we need this kind of person, but yeah. um, okay. Okay. I, I, be, I would like to just have it stay until we um, see what the total budgets are. Yep. I think we're going to be in for an amazing awakening when all these numbers I know. get put together. So. I know. But we aren't there yet, Trevor. It's too much. It's out. I know. I didn't mean to say it like that, but I just think like we're it all just a hard year. It is a hard year. Um, and around capital, capital is intending to be able to give you guys a recommendation within a couple of weeks. By certainly, my discussion with Mark Brennan and planning was to be able to do that. By, I want to say the sixth. 16th or the latest, whatever it is, 
because we know that we have to get it. We know we have to do the do the hearing piece, but also incorporate all those capital requests into the budget to start. Yeah. Oh, we're so. Trevor's one of the co workers. That's the main point. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, it's like having under the place because technically it's approval of co workers, which is in the point. Right. Okay, great. So, this, I just got it on Tuesday afternoon. Do you need a motion? Yes. Okay. For approval as presented. Motion to approve the town of Deerfield co workers for the term beginning February 22nd, 2022, and ending December 31st, 2022. I'll second that. No further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Do you have to read all the names or no? It's just yeah, as presented, right? In the back. Okay, great. In the back. Yeah, Thank you. That way you don't get to butcher it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I can butcher anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have a... Even though I have a hard name. Sign <laughs> somewhere? You got maybe Dave can ask you that question? Um, okay. There's probably something somewhere. Oh. Else, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Neutral. You know, on the Deerfield Academy MOU, well, that's still not, don't have it back from them yet. Okay. It's been submitted. Oh, thank you. Do we want to make any comments about Nupro right now or no? Yeah. No comments on Nupro for the moment, right? No. Okay, appointments and resignations. Do we have any? We just did the, uh, the, the, the appointment. appointment. Yeah, yeah, just oh, okay. Yes. Mail. Um, can we forward this? Um, I'm sure the Energy Committee has it, but because they're pretty sharp. But can we forward this Green Communities Competitive Grant Program to the Energy Committee? I think I did. A, well, I'll do it. But I think I, I thought I did a blind carbon copy thing. Yes. Um. We uh, we have a couple. I, I know we were thinking of a couple different things, so um, that would be good. Mm -hmm. And we had the offer from the UMass um, professor to help us too on, you know, applying for a, you know, to help towards the regional, I mean, the um, campus heating system and stuff like that, you know, the geothermal system. So I know. Well, it has to be, it has to do, I know, it has to do with the And then they just cemented them over because they just cost so much to run when electricity. You're constantly running the pumps and you're constantly circulating the air and it was just a fortune and everybody just cemented them in and that was it. I. But maybe there's a better system. There is a better past. system, I yeah. I but I, I know the stuff residentially wasn't very good. No, uh, unless you had... Unless you had um, solar to, you know, to offset. Pay, yeah, to pay offset. The, yeah, exactly. So. Um, there's a lot of energy used. Yeah, and there, and as far as I know, right now there's no grant program for solar canopies because you know that obviously we'd be interested in Leary Lot and over at the park, but um, I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> we. It's one of those things. It's it's There's very changeable. Money, well. We met with the UMass professor that's doing the, you know, evaluation with us, and he seemed to think that there was some really good options out there. So I don't know. I think we have to keep in mind that you have to have a backup heating system. I don't know what kind of what kind. What well, if you're especially if you're doing, um, you know, housing, because this would be we would put it in as part of the senior housing when we had the ground dug up for senior housing. And then, and then they would heat the elementary school, the, the town hall, the senior new senior center, the library, 
you know, the whole thing, maybe even Frontier. So it'd be, yeah. you're talking about the a giant. Uh, do like, all that needs to be, then you've got to put in all the HVAC duct work. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any duct work like that over there. I don't think it's like at the schools and all boilers and oil radiators. It's not like blowing air. Trevor, I don't, I don't know enough to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's like cybersecurity. Yeah, right. I glaze over. <laughs> I'm I'm on board for saving money. I'm on board I for doing projects. Innovative, but... futuristic stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just have to not when that's what we pay engineers for. <laughs> that's right. Just saying. Yeah. I'm 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 trying to be, you know, Open as informed mind. as much as possible yeah. and make sure we're out hustling. But yeah. I'm, okay. When you start talking about that, I'm not really sure. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we got this letter from Candace. So they want us to spend another twenty-five thousand dollars to. No, we had this meeting the other night. At I thought so. Capital, and, and this was this letter was before that. Yeah, and I think it, it was just to inform us if we did want a more solid number before we get the grant and all that stuff, then we'd have to spend money on that. We all and we, feel and, like, and nah, we'll wait. I heard Capital say, nope. <laughs> yeah, we're all just like, we'll wait, and then here. I didn't know if she was trying to no, no. do a different front. No, no, no. No, I think she, she sent it out, and yeah. I had already included it in your mail, so okay. it was already there. To okay. well, well, what happened is, you know, we've been getting all these estimates between 8 and 14 million. And her application says between 8 and 11 million, so I sent her an email today. I think she can just say, let's look at it from 8, but maybe send that as an email to Catherine. I think she left herself some leeway when she refreshed the application for capital. Mm -hmm. So, but I did reach out to her. I, I just so the board knows I, and I copied Mark on it. Well, what is clear that we have to, if if we do the library project, the town has to go out and borrow the full amount of the project. Correct. Yes. And then over a period of four to five years, you get reimbursed depending yeah. how. Or just shy no. of four million. Just million. yeah, right. No, just yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh. But yeah, it does mean that it's a self sealing thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that we don't really have any other. We can't do anything else. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see where we are. I'm so lucky. We could probably do that project for six with no grants and no OPM, and you know what I mean. Well, you still would be somewhat, but you know what I mean. Like you wouldn't need. I think you need a, construction a, services. The one with the school. Trevor, you don't have to tell me. I, I was there every single week. Spare me the time. I just. I was there every single week with Kippy, and I. Yep. And that it came in under. Yep. It was. No. A lot of, a lot it, of was it was a lot, but it was only because we were. There. A post meeting every week that allowed us to make decisions. We had an excellent contractor that it came in under budget or right on around budget. It's and a windfall for, for anybody who has but this contract with the state. It, it, it was Man, our, the state giving us the, their, whatever we had no choice with, and all the hoops you go through that cost us a lot of money. Yeah. that didn't have to be spent right. and so I, you know when you say you get 50 percent of a project like you got 50 percent of the project mm -hmm. this is really only worth about 35 percent and and so that's you know it's better than nothing it, it is yeah when you had to do the roof money. we had yeah. to do the roof and yeah. we don't have to worry about it now because we got the 30-year um you know uh, shingles. Roof shingles but they initially were going to give us like the 10, oh, the 15 yeah, year know. shingles. Mm -hmm. And it definitely would not have been worth it then. So I, you know, you just. Yeah. Is that what's starting it? Right. And yeah. even I, who knew that not that much, the shingle was ser seriously like half a stick. Half a stick. And, and the a, quality it was even terrible. Like that. It wasn't even like that. It, it would it would, it would break up in a in a in five years or so it was terrible so do I trust the state no all that 
starting to go down just before I left. That's right. That's first right. time up. Yeah. I can remember going toe to toe with the business manager for the school yeah. about because she was so insistent on that it had to be done this way. I said, oh. No. Well, because that's what they know, you know, it's just... Yeah, that's what they know, but they didn't want us involved in it at all. Yeah. They wanted the contractor and the contractor's consultant were the I only two that were going to... Yeah. I said, well, time out. <laughs> I just... It was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. So, but it was only successful because we were sitting there yeah. literally every week with them yeah. at the meeting, and they hated it. All, all the people that were hired to be our representatives... So it was not a good thing. No, no, when the people that were hired to be our representatives were representatives of the contract. No, it was Dick Kalashevsky, Kippy, yeah, and myself sitting yeah. there every week yeah. with the contractor trying mm -hmm. to make sure that we got the job done because they wanted to move on. They were good contractors. So yeah, they the contractor had, was good. So he wanted to move on, and they were dragging him out and making him costs making him lose didn't money. Even run around for screws that didn't even exist. Oh, I know. He it was a screw that didn't even exist. They I couldn't see go find one. Oh, then he realized, oh no, this doesn't even exist. I know. It was gross. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so sorry. Oh, oh yours. Right yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do I hear a motion? <laughs> if you want to make a motion, go ahead. No. Um, so I have an update on ARPA that I want to run by you guys. Okay. We'll have more conversation about it, but. We had a conversation with our auditor, Tom Scano, friend I know, um, about the final rule and how to use the ARPA funds. And there's two paths. The first option is to utilize this as a grant, so to speak. And that means you follow all the grant requirements of the grant description, tabulating your expenditures, reporting um, as each separate project. The other way to do this is the declaration of revenue loss. And this is the approach that Tom has suggested to us. And what that would do is we would declare a loss of revenue after, sometime after April 4th, when the final rule goes into effect. And this is the federal and state determination of how things, the final rule, and of how to utilize your ARPA funds, what projects you can do, what your intent should be, because different towns are doing this differently. Some towns are utilizing it through a grant process. Other towns are doing the declaration of revenue loss. And so we would, if you if we choose to go the declaration of lost revenue pathway, that's probably the most efficient way to do it. But we have to pay attention to when we receive our tranches of money. So we received our first tranche from the federal government directly for the town in June. 2021, and then didn't get the county the county amount until August. And some of that may have been just matriculating it from the federal government down to the cop mm -hmm. who was the dispersing authority. So there's a there's a question about whether we would have to do one or two votes if we chose to go through the lost revenue. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it effectively releases the funds. If you do it between now and June 30th, it effectively releases the funds um, for use because you're saying you lost revenue, so there are some certain things we couldn't do in 22, so we would utilize that in that manner. How much documentation? This is what makes me nervous because... The second piece is the best way to do it from what Tom said because the documentation is minimal. You're using it to supplement. You're basically, basically using it to fund 22. Because we went, because when the CARE Act, you could use it as um, for lost revenue. And when I sat down with Brenda, we had less than $20,000. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. You don't have no, to justify it at all. So what that you, was the thing we had to go through. Right. And what you, with this thing, you would, you would say, you would look back at your 22 budget and you would say, I'm going to fund this uh, with this money. So we could say, we're funding this money for the Leary lot. No, well, no, you would fund it in our budget that we have already. We so would you would, you would fund highway and police or something like that, right? Then you obviously, you've already appropriated sure. that money. That money rolls over in the fall in the free cash. Then you can use that free cash for any governmental entity, any expenditure. Right. 
And so, so you already have projects that you tentatively approved, but we didn't have funding for it, like right. the police department and two eight eight. All those kind of things. So, and then for the second amount, I think that's why it's important right now as we're doing our twenty twenty three project is a uh, uh, budget is to lay out the projects that we wanted to do this money uh, for. We rely these different items, weeks or whatever, um, you know, the HVACs lay out these projects, whether it's the common or whatever we want to spend that money on directed by the select board, because that's, we have control over the funding. Obviously when it goes to free cash, it's a different kind of funding appropriation uh, entity or process. But if we, got other groups in there. because if you lay out exactly what we want in that 23 budget, the second tranche of money, we can just roll over and pay for those projects again. Um, so they can go right to pay for the project, or they can roll over into free cash and, and do what we want with it. So one thing that we would have to do is if we run, so we close out, if things close out to free cash, then we do have to go back and appropriate through John Deere. Correct. But we can have already set up what we plan to do. Right. So, so you guys have already talked about plan. several things. It eliminates the second Way eliminates the grant reporting piece that everybody's and wrapped up. It, yeah. it eliminates but it that gets expense. everybody involved in saying, well, no, we're going to use this, or no, we're going to do that. Right now, the select board has the authority to kind of write the, spend that money through the grants how we see fit. And I think we do that, but we lay that out in the projects that I think everybody agrees that we need to work on. And I think, yeah. you know, there's a lot in there that we could tackle. Obviously, we you look at the capital projects for this year coming up. And things that we wanted to do last year, I right. think that there's you had approval for certain things that we pulled off of that, that we list. pulled off the table, so like I the think HVAC that we could for the PD. Lay because those we didn't things know what out. Look like. So and and then just say that we're we're either going to go one way or the other. We're either going to keep it in the grant. We're going to do this, or if we have everybody's buy-in, these are the projects we all agree we want to do. This is how we're going to do it. That way, it's not it's not a um, you're not the town's not appropriating money. We're not wasting money, it's very transparent on what we're spending it on, and we tackle the projects that everybody's been talking about. And so Tom's willing to help us with this. He, Brenda and I have talked to him a couple times about it. Um, there are some nuances I think we need to lay out, but that's fundamentally the approach um, that he's recommended. And we have until like August, or any April to figure out. And how much total amount do we have to talk Right about? now we have uh, over 740000 but again, we haven't received the second tranche. Yeah, right, it's a million right, four. One, two and one four. Yeah, I, I, I heard it was like one four. But the question is, is when is the money going to come in from the county? Because like right. I said, that was two months late. And the recommendation is to, you know, take the money. Right, just get it all done one four. But, but if we have to, we can do it in two. And so, so there's that update. And but there's technically, if I'm interpreting it right, there's a way that we can help balance our budget. That's exactly what you're doing. You're actually declaring it a lost revenue and using it to balance that budget. Okay. Because you you do have things that are outstanding that you wanted to pursue. And, and we want to do it on one time expenditures versus like pay. Exactly. So so the the concern here, and this is what Brenda and Tom and I talked about is if we utilize this for one-time expenditures of capital, we don't need a whole new budget for next year. Right. Because if you use it for an operational expense, you could conceivably need a whole new budget. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's not the smart way to, to go about it if you want to have the ability to be balanced the or next year. Or if we well, this is, one, temp, temp. this is a one-time shot. Right. It or is. It's one-time infusion of capital. We're using this temporary money to fund a just pick a, a health care, you know, worker well, we for a couple about of years. Social, exactly. So, Those social kind of yeah. you, you could lay out mm -hmm. as doing the contracted thing, but not hiring for it. But as a grant kind of thing, an internal grant for, for these kind of services that we want to do, they wouldn't be funded forever. They would be a short, you know, a window of time kind of thing. Yeah. And so I wouldn't want to use this, for instance, as a funding source for a grant writer and not contracted services. I wouldn't. Right. Because that needs to go but next year you wouldn't have the funding for it. But. Um, so, so we have until like 
we have we have a little we have moment. a little time and I would like to refine that somewhat. Mm -hmm. So it may be worthwhile getting some more input from Tom because he's working with other groups and, and one of the reasons that we talked to Tom about that is because he has so much exposure to so many other towns and, and the nuances of how to utilize this. I, I would like to talk to him though. My, my only concern though too would be um, I think that it is important right now to clarify what we want to spend either at least that second half on so there is no question where that money is going if there isn't a loan we have because it in the budget instance, already the health worker we need to be able to implement that but yeah. if, if we declare the revenue loss after april fourth, then guess what yeah we can we can um and so the other piece that's important that i want you guys to know about these are a couple of the things that have come up in the last week or two weeks but they're key things we also had a conversation, not only Brenda and I and Tom, but Tom and the assistant treasure collector and assistant town clerk and Brenda and I sat down and talked about how we can how we can move forward with town clerk treasure collector. So Tom's recommendation and Brenda and I agree that this is how we should pursue it is to separate town clerk from treasure collector. And we had a frank discussion because we wanted the input of Jeff and Sarah on the office. So if we separate out town clerk, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a, a 40 hour a week job, but certainly it's over 20, probably to start at 30 to be conservative. Because again, I'm going to give you the conservative approach because I don't know exactly what that work's going to look like. What I do know is, is we still need two people in that office. But, so we separate town clerk out. You have a treasure collector, an assistant to treasure collector. And then right now, Jen's position sort of floats. You know, she does a lot of assistant town clerk work, but she also does collections work. You know, she's, she's the one that usually jumps up at the window. And so, but there's, a, there's an element of support that's missing in there that really needs to be captured, and that's support for Brenda. And one thing that's important is that, so Brenda's been focusing on much higher level work budget development working with usda loan mm -hmm. staff on managing the reporting for that um, she's worked with me on grant reporting for cares act um, so we, we she's got a level of expertise and attention that we need to keep focused so we also need to make some accommodation around some of the the detail-oriented work that she does but that takes away from her ability to concentrate so it's building exercise and I asked both Sarah and Jen to really look into what things they thought could be reevaluated to meet the needs in the office or support the elections functions and town clerk, other town clerk functions but also the collections functions but not cross the line of treasury versus account because we have to maintain that barrier so it may be that we reconfigure the other full-time staff person in that office to meet more of the needs. Still cite the town clerk in there, the vault's in there, and functionally there's, there's stuff that needs to be accessible in there. But have a treasure collector, have an assistant treasure collector, and proceed down that path. We would need a general court vote, which means we need to present an article in town meeting for to affect that change. And I think my suggestion, although I have not had a chance to talk to them about it, my suggestion for the board is we pursue a temporary situation to hire a town clerk and hire a treasure collector on a contract basis so that we can meet the needs of that office because they are swamping with that one for a thing. And it will help us really refine what it is we're looking at for workload because we know there's a lot of work in there. Emotionally, I can sit down and Jen follows and I go over certain things. Um, I have a whole new page list of work, the responsibilities just around town for our not even the treasure collector. But there's some very specific work that the assistant treasure collector and treasure collector need to do. And so, you know, there's, there's a need to figure this out so that we can decide what we need in terms of a full time person, if necessary. For town clerk, or whether it needs to be reduced a bit because we're changing how people are deployed in town. Did this kind of off 
topic, but did we ever get the female reimbursement yet? No, we haven't. I sent an email. I asked that same question yesterday. <laughs> what? The what? The FEMA reimbursement for um, the vaccinations. Oh. The last FEMA reimbursement. Um, and I sent an email out to our contact. How, how much should we submit for? The vaccinations is 14000 So We got the two other reimbursements. Okay. So we still have 14,000 outstanding there. And how about um, from uh, Natalie and Joe, 7.5 million? What, do we get any of that money from FEMA? So they didn't put anything in? Not, that, not directly we applied for, no, because we didn't apply for specific programs within that FEMA portal. We applied for what was available during the emergency response, both for the COVID-19 response and then vaccination. No, 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 I'm talking about the storm. Uh, they July didn't storm. Have we didn't have, we didn't meet the threshold. No, I know, but um, the secondary. what Joe and um, Nally put in was 7.5 million that FEMA did not approve for uh, uh, Franklin County. And I wondered how much of our of it was ours. Excuse me, that passed? Uh, last I, last I heard that that yeah. was passed. It was in the same group of money that my like 100,000 mosquito money was in, and we already got our mosquito money. Okay. It was in the same package. So that's, that brings me to a question about next week. So next week we have a meeting. Um, well, we I, are going to need their support if we're moving forward with separating these two. Yes. Um, which I think we should do. Um, we're going to need their support to facilitate that. What time is the meeting? Ten. 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 So I just want everybody aware of where where it's sort of falling down. I think logistically we can make some changes without. And, and this is so the other piece of this is what's the effect going to be on the budget because we would make some changes to how we perform the staff. Um, but the town clerk functions are fundamentally different than the treasurer collector functions. Even though you've got somebody taking money in. That, is that in person or in That's in person. In person here, yeah, okay. Um, so you got two in person here. Yeah. So you put together a plan? So I'm gonna, what place. I was going to do is put, the, put this together in some framework, but really there's two things that are going to need to happen. We're going to need to post a vacancy if you guys. Yes. Agree to do this as a, a, and the only way to do it is contract without changing. The so you can have like funding for the budget. Right now we have some funding. The issue is, is how are we going to build this into the budget? And so that's a conversation we're going to have. All right. All right. So, but it gives us a path, and I think it's a path that's thoughtful. That's one of the reasons we wanted to talk to the staff. Yeah. And also talk to um, yeah, for sure. So. And we know we're going to face as we move forward because we know there's a dearth of people in these positions. Functionally, these financial positions are going to be um, difficult to play. So, can we build ourselves the capacity to? I was just going to say it's going to be pretty. Here, yeah, it's going to be it, it's going to be a while before we get somebody. Yeah. I think it depends. I, it depends on how we. It depends on how we approach it. And so, one thing that I think we should do is take advantage of the connections that we already have. Oh, yeah, the listservs no. and MMA, and just we have well, to we have can job get descriptions. Yeah. So, I will be coming back to you, job oh, descriptions okay. for those two things. Later, and I have a start, I just haven't had a chance to go through them in depth. I have Jennifer working on it, she's going to be working on it. Okay. okay, good. Those are the two major things that are coming that I'm going to be working on. Okay, thank you. All right, motion to adjourn. I make and that motion. <laughs> No, I just want to talk about that. I'm, yeah, I'm actually that. drafting a report, Carol. I know you've got to spend more than that. I do, but I'll send it to you in paper. Sure. Sure. All right. All, right. All those you. in favor? Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Dave. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you, John. I really Thank you, appreciate it.